Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Britannica YouTube channel. We are in episode six of our Dolmenwood campaign using old school essentials as our rules system. Uh, I am John, your referee for the night, and going around the horn once again, we have Mike playing Elfric the Wizard, David playing Snell the Hunter, Matt playing Halifax Swinney the Knight, the Squire, and Ted playing Argus Dreger the Fighter. Um, last time we caught up with our intrepid heroes once again in quotes um you guys were dying from the death rot <laughs> except for argus uh but with uh, a victory underneath your belts in that you have rescued the young lady violet Haramore, heir to the uh house Haramore, um thanks to the help of uh lady Haramore's re Haramore's retinue of knights and of course the mightiest of gmpcs Reverend Constantius <laughs> <laughs> of his emperor's inquisition. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you guys, um, uh, it was gruesome work at the very end with Elfric uh, uh, stymieing in the most gruesome way possible uh, the spread of the rot to th um, three of them. Yeah, three of the knights who had been infected. Two of them ended up dying, but because of Elfric's quick thinking um, and hacking off some limbs... Uh, he has he has stopped the uh, <laughs> stopped the rot from affecting them. So, um, you are uh, picking up from last time. You guys were in the freezing rain. It is the fifteenth of Limewald, which is February. Um, you are in the Abbey ruins right now. The gloam apparently has been either destroyed or dispersed. You're not really sure, um, but uh, the crows went in all four directions and have not returned. Um, the spell over them seems to uh, over the children seems to have been broken. They are crying in your arms right now, uh, to completely distraught. They have no idea where they are. They recognize each other, um, but um, uh, they have no memory of what happened, um, right. nor where they got there. But they do recognize um, uh, Lady Eleanor, the 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 knight who is in charge of the retinue and is also Halifax's uh, mentor. Um, and so Willie and Bilbrey are like from the Haramore castle, right? They're indeed, like story yes. Kids or something. Yeah. Or, so like his, her companions, I think. That's right. Yeah, they were basically like her her play companions. Um, they were they're basically servants' childrens, servants' okay. children, um, but they all hail from from Castle Haramore. So, okay. um, so it's yeah, it's freezing rain. I don't remember. I don't think you guys are very hurt though, right? Actually, with hit point damage, right? You're pretty oh, good. We're fine. Yeah, yeah, no one, no one even got attacked. I don't think, except for like the knights, because we were too busy running away. Right. So five of the knights died outright in initial attack by the gloam, and then two more died of the uh, um, uh, of uh, oh, bleed, bleeding out from the wounds. Basically, yeah. 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 Um, they already had the death rod anyway, so they're basically marked. Now, um, you guys, uh, the three of you, uh, that's Snell, Elfric, and Halifax, who are dying from the death rot, uh, you know, that, that is also slowly spreading, but no time has passed since last time. It is basically around noon time because you beat ass to get over here. Um, right. And um, the question was, uh, what do you do now, now that you have the children? So we've, we've been t talking about it, and I think that a quick reconnoiter of the tower is in order. Um, I don't think we're up for fighting any undead in the graveyard, but... Yep. If the gloam is gone, maybe left behind gold teeth, for example, or, <laughs> you know, cool. some sort of plus five armor or, you know. Cool. I, I'm all for doing a, a little bit of uh, careful exploring. We are yeah. hanging on there at, like, I think three hit points, which yeah. is better oh, yeah. than yeah. the one which yeah. we were yeah. Fully healthy is still kind of shitty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, we, sorry, we have, but I'm at 75% health, dude. I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't forget your blood loss is over, Mike. You can you can actually exactly. afford to I'm heal one. Great. Yeah, that's amazing. It would be stupid to go away without at least looking to see what's in the tower. Yeah, okay, so um, I mean, it, 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 it's repeating for everyone at OSC community is we get no XP if we don't get money. Yeah, so the dollar dollar bill. That's true. Dollar dollar bill, y'all, is yeah. the only thing that matters. You have a big sack full of a thousand gold that you got for bringing word of her yeah. daughter to her. So amazing. I need yeah. two thousand two hundred and fifty more to hit second level. Yeah, and yeah. that thousand's got divided by four. Yeah, long way away from leveling up. So yeah, yeah we should go look in there. It's actually a, yeah, that's actually have, a, have an empty sack as well. So I'm ready to take some loot home. Um, Argus, Argus might drag his feet uh, as we attempt to cure ourselves and 
somehow procure that thousand for himself. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no, <laughs> Take no, a little no. uh, multi-classing and thief. Um, okay, so um, pouring rain. Now, uh, there's a difference between what would actually be a realistic in world and a little bit of the of the of the the game itself. In that, everybody here basically outranks you guys. They de they defer to you a little bit because you were the ones that found her and know and knew where she was. But um, when it comes down to it, they don't really need to listen to you. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. So when they hear word that you want to go and um, you know, it's in the freezing rain. You accomplish their mission. The Abbey is known to be haunted by everyone. And right. they're, you're like, we're going to go check out the tower. All of them are like, you do you, but we're going back to camp right, right, right. now. So, well, so can I then raise my hand and, and say, you know, Reverend, um, I understand you guys want to get back. Nobody wants to go in there. There could be more children in there. Could you just wait a little bit for us to go look and see if there's more kids? I mean, they're they're going back to the the hunters camp where we we yeah. spent the night, right? To kind of like back up and get ready, right? Uh, yeah, the, oh, they're the, not the, going to ride back to work right away. No, they. I mean, yeah. they. Uh, well, I guess what would they realistically do? Actually, they do have the time because they all are mounted. So, yeah, we, we. So I would say realistically, they wouldn't want actually want to like wait for you at camp, right? So could they give us an hour? Okay. That's fine. It yeah, take time so, for them to break down camp anyway. Lady right? Eleanor like looks up at like the leaden sky, mm -hmm. basically with rain like pitter pattering on her face, and she's like, "I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you one hour, in, mm -hmm. in order to search to see Fair. if there might there might be you're right there might be more children, but I like not the uh, uh, the feeling of this place. We all know it is haunted. It is cursed and unholy. We need to leave. Um, and uh, she. There's also the matter of, um, yeah, and during that one hour, they've got to bring up the bodies and strap them to the horses and, yeah, exactly. you know, and all that See, All those guys that are wounded and carrying their arms with them, like, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, we should definitely dilly dally and hem and haw at every turn and intersection in the tower. And <laughs> yeah. all the go. blood pressure goes you, up. You, well, technically, you guys can totally do that because they'll just leave and they'll take the children with them. And yeah, right. you know, you're back. No, we really want to ride back into town in their company, though. I think for the cred, absolutely. Well, yeah. Like it's it's and, very high on uh, Halifax's list yeah. to have that FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. there present the when the kids the kids encounters. are brought in. Understood. Sure. Yeah. And the lack of encounters. Yes. Let me let me like just pull. I had like little Billy uh, under my arm when I carried him away, and be like, and I'm just gonna ask him really quick. I'd be like, did you see anything else in that tower? Um that Mr. Rag and Bones, oh, they don't actually remember anything, right? The right, last thing right. they said they remembered was the castle, right? That's right, yeah. Just okay. kind of they don't remember there anything. Are. Yeah. yeah. All right, never mind then. He's like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> does um, Violet still have her locket? Uh, she does, yes. Um, If I get a chance, just ask her to tell her mother that, you know, she's been freed from the spell. Um. <gasps> uh, you're quite right. I completely forgot that I had this locket. Yeah. And she she pops it open. It's like she's the first time she's seen it. She's like, Mother? Mother, are you there? Oh, there you are. Yes. Yes, Mother. I, I'm safe. I'm safe. Everything's all right. The, the, the good men have found me. Lady Eleanor's here. Yes, Brother Reverend Estantius and some, some strange-looking men, but, but very kind. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Yes, Mother, I'll be there as soon as we possibly can. Yes, of course, of course. Yes, I'll wear something warm. And you, you know. Oh, great! We're the strange-looking men now. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Hey, you know, we, we, we made we made the list. I I think the word she's looking for, by the way, is jive turkeys. I think. <laughs> with, uh... <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Argus and the jive turkeys. Yes, is uh, soon to be the. Yeah, I like that way better than the name that Dave came up with. The thunderclaps. <laughs> Don't Fine. bring it up. Yeah. Don't bring it up. I would rather be Argus leave, than the Leave it down in the comments, band. folks. Is either Look, if Thunder you want to have a battle of the bands, we can have a battle of the bands. But this is this is uh, happening live. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Anyways, for now. All right. Let's go, guys. Let's go check so, out this yeah. tower. We have we have basically thirty minutes to get in and out. Right. Uh, I mean, I know they said yeah, an I'm hour. Not, I'm not going to be a hard ass about it. But you, if you yeah. limit yourself to the tower, then you're then you're fine. Um, and right. they won't leave without you um, unless, okay. unless, so, unless uh, you're all dead. Excuse me. Sorry, one second. I gotta, just got to go take care of a kid. I'll be right back. Yep, sure, no yep. problem. So um, I think um, 
I'll get out my my, you know, my, field, <laughs> my spear, and I want to go up to the front door and sort of assess like, is there light inside from windows? Do we need a torch or a lantern? Sure. I volunteer to be the torch bearer. Okay. Dude, I have no spells left. You might as well just let me carry the torch. Uh, well, okay. I have a lantern so, if you want a lantern. Okay. All right. So, what's it? Who, what is in each one of you guys' hands? Let's put it that way. I have a shield and a spear. Shield and spear. Okay. I'll take a, a lantern if I have a lantern. I gotta look at my equipment and and my dagger in my other hand. Okay. Let me, let so, me look at my equipment list here real quick. I have uh, I have a sword in one hand. Nothing. Um, nothing in the other. I have my magnifying glass in the other. Ah. <laughs> Snell, so Snell lock. Snell lock <laughs> Um Okay. I'll light a torch, John. I, I just have a torches. Okay. Can you? Um, oh, torch. Okay. Cool. So you just use a tinderbox. You don't have to use oil. All right. Cool. So you light a torch, um, and it flickers. You know, it, it's it's the noonday, but it's like very leaden because of the freezing rain. So you kind of have to get underneath the eaves of the tower in order to prevent yeah. it from going out. But um, in general, here uh, as you approach. It's the first time you've actually gotten close to it, so it is a um, from a distance you can tell us. Of course, it's a it's a tall tower, but it's it's square, so it kind of gives a, a, a like a an impression of being sort of squat, um, and it's topped with a belfry where the crows were, of course. And um, I'll repeat this once again: it is stands largely undamaged. It's one of the very few wholly undamaged buildings um, that uh, that are strewn across this um, this the top of this hill where the abbey proper is. So. Um, you can see that there is a heavy wooden door um, that sort of has like iron filigree, or, you know, on it. Um, that is a uh, it closed basically, or okay. sli- I should say slightly open, like it's a slightly ajar. Now, this is me being ignorant on OSE stuff. Uh, can I look and observe on things, even though it's not? I'm not like a thief. I know that's a big thing in fifth edition. You can't ever find like traps or anything like that if you're not like a class. Like, but no, you can. This every, every person can find um, traps. Every right. single, every single one. You just have to right. tell me what you're looking for. You have to be specific. So since I'm under the eaves of the thing and I'm right in front of the door anyway, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get down on my hands and knees, hold the torch as close to I, as I can without setting fire to myself, mm-hmm. and I want to look at the lock and see if the lock looks like it's been used. Is are there like, you know, scratch marks around the keyhole? Um, if I shine my torch into the key, do I see like a, like a needle or anything like that? Do, no, but I. You know, but, you, but just in case you're maybe. I, mean, I just want to be make you aware that the door is slightly ajar already. If, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. Then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna take. I put away my dagger, pull out my staff, and with the end of my staff and me at the far end of it, holding my torch out, mm-hmm. I'm gonna kind of push the door open. But I'm gonna stand to one side of the doorway. Sure. Yeah. And everyone else yeah. is gonna stand to one side of the doorway yeah. too. Yeah. So you want me to do that, Mike? I mean, I was already kind of up at the front anyway, and I've got a shield and. It's up to you, bro. I mean. I only got two weeks to live, so you <laughs> use me. Here to he's, feeling, he's feeling Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's use those two weeks wisely. You go first. All right. All right. So I will, I will do exactly what I described. Then. Let's take a moment. So of what's happening what. here is the magic user is first in marching order and is opening the door first. It's a very, <laughs> very rare thing, man. I'm, it's very I'm right metal. Next to you then, Mike, and I, you know, shield up and spear out and. Uh, got it. Yeah. All right. So use the the staff to to push it open, um, and it opens easily. It's not a problem. You've seen it open a number of times because the kids have done that three stages right. thing a couple of times, right? So we just don't know if they were disengaging some sort of trap before they opened the door. True. Yes, but so, nothing nothing happens, and it opens up and. Yeah. Uh, it reveals um, what appears to be uh, in, uh, on the ground floor. Remember, this is supposed to be a bell tower, but on the ground floor is actually an old shrine, um, which uh, still has a set of wooden pews um, that are obviously like completely eroded and decayed, and like they're worm worm riddled holes in them, all that kind of good stuff. And there is a at the far end from where you guys are, there is a marble statue um, of a saint that is standing undamaged in an alcove. Um, um, and you can John, see that at the base of the statue, there is a uh, inscription on the base of it. I think just to help visualize everything that's going on here, I know it's a square tower. You said right, mm-hmm. and is it like thirty feet across at the base? Fifty feet? Uh, it's probably about fifty by fifty, roughly. It's, fifty yeah. by fifty. Yeah. And so, and does where this is the room, staircase? Hmm? Does this room appear to fill that whole first floor, or is it? Yeah, it fills up the whole oh, first yeah. floor. Yeah. Okay. It fills up so. The first floor. Then to Mike's point, where's the stairs? 
And so the stairs are actually to uh, to your left, basically, so to the west. And it's just a uh, freestanding set of uh, metal stairs, like spiral stairs that go up. That'll allow. Mm -hmm. Oh, spiral stairs. Yeah, spiral Very stairs. Very advanced. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned an inscription. Can we uh, can we read it from where we are? Yeah, you want to move across the room to go check it out? Let's go look at the stairs. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to use my staff to tap the floor. To, yeah, for check for floorboards. To poke for, like, if there's, like, a pile of debris, I'll kind of give it a poke with my staff as I go across the sure. floor. Yeah, so it's, like, obviously like trepidation. trepidation. Stone it's, floor or it, is it uh, beams? It's lumber. exactly what I was going to ask. It's, a, <laughs> it's stone floor. Okay. Slight, okay, so slightly yeah, buckled. There is a little bit of like roots um, have come up from underneath and pushed their way through, but by and large, it's actually pr pretty. Um, except for the rotted furniture, the wooden furniture, it's pretty well preserved. Okay. So very, very carefully, under, under, I understand you move across uh, the floor and you make your way to the um, the statue. The statue is in complete shadow because there is no sun today, basically. Um, so it's a little bit foreboding looking. Uh, but all of you uh, Dolmenwood natives would immediately recognize it as a statue dedicated. Uh, the statue is representing St. Woad, W-O-A-D, who happens to be the patron of bakers, bears, and hammersmiths. And blue face paint. <laughs> hammersmiths? Uh, hammersmiths, that's right, yeah. And uh, is that a fancy way of saying blacksmith, or is that a smith that only makes hammers? Only makes hammers, yeah. They cut that pie really narrow, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I like. Is some of these saints is like they not only do they have odd juxtapositions of of patronages that these saints uh have, but um, they're also like extremely specific, right? Um, right, which is kind of cool. Uh, anyways, uh, it gives the date of the erection of this tower. And it gives it as 1375 AR. Um, what year is it now? The year now is 1601. AR, by the way, means after the revelation, which means uh, after the revelation of Isaiah. So, um, 200 and some years old. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know from the tales of the Abbey's founding that that roughly puts it around 74 to 75 years after the completion of the Abbey proper. Okay. Oh, so sure. The, so I the, was wondering. So the tower is a little bit like, substantially newer. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so okay. St. Wode, uh, so it basically says St. Wode established 1375 AR. Um, you also know that Saint, the, the, the story about St. Wode basically is that um, uh, he dissuaded an attacking dragon somewhere in the world by offering it fresh buns from a local baker's oven. I love it. Of course. It makes perfect sense. Of course, the thing they don't tell you about in the stories is that those buns were packed with the flesh of virgins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, uh, it's a, it's an interesting thing just because it, uh, uh, pastries were sort of on your mind because Sprudem and Neve at the Bardic Guild at the Wrinkled Meddler mentioned that the missing velvet touch um, was seen last in the company of some women who came in and sold pastries at the local stall. Just a kind of a weird coincidence that you would see the the, the patron of bakers um, here in the bell tower. Um, is there an abbey wall? or something of St. Wode around somewhere? Uh, no, there's a, there's only two abbeys. You're in one of them, and they're ruins. The only other known abbey in Dolmenwood is the Refuge of St. Key, which is a way stop be on the Horse Eye Road between pre and Castle Brackenwold. You actually pass through it on the way here pre-campaign. Right, okay. John, is you there have a nice time. Sign... You did. It was very nice, very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> is there any sign of like a foot that's been worn down from sort of people, missionaries coming and like you know fetching it for good luck, or any sort of wear or tear or interaction with the statue that I can see? No, I'll there isn't. My my magnifying glass, just in case. Gotcha. Yeah. No, there, you you look thoroughly around the statue, and it does yeah. not appear that it's been touched in any way, shape, or form for some yeah. time. You had to move through a considerable amount of debris on your. Through, down the nave to get to the to the statue. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the only clear path was clearly between um, the door and the stairway. So, which is basically like a, a hard ninety degree angle from the door, right? It's like right there to the left. Gotcha. Right now, is the statue on a plinth or altar of some kind? It is it's on a on a very low plinth. Um, okay. Yeah, it it itself is on a little plinth which has the inscription on it. Yeah, that plinth is then on uh, like a one step altar. So, do we search that? Do we search that for yeah. treasure? Oh, what's, 
Exactly. I, I, I shouldn't say an altar. I should say whatever the raised dais is of, of, yeah, of, but, an, of an apse. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. The question is, in a chapel like this, you'd expect to find, you know, candelabra, maybe a, a bowl it, for offerings or something, you know, so. Right. That all appears to be gone. Except for pews and the statue, there's very little of value. In fact, the only thing of value is, is basically the statue. But yes, there is obviously like a, a place set aside where there probably was an altar at some point. There mm -hmm. is a sacristy uh, in the back. There, you know, like all the typical trappings of a uh, Peleetic uh, right. place of worship are here. Now, that said, it's obviously not the main one. I mean, the whole place was an abbey, right? So um, you, you assume that the, 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 the grand uh, place of worship is back where the ghost crows were that the trappers were in, right? Which you have yet to go into. Uh do rations, is it just hard tack? What's, is there any sort of like bread in a ration? The yep. description of iron rations is foods that keep for a long time. So hard tack, you know, yeah. hard tack, presumably beef jerky, nuts. Yeah. Would we consider hard tack baked? <laughs> I suppose it is. That's that's a place. Why do you want leavened goods? I, well? I just want to, I just want to leave, leave just sort of like a small offering, a small observation at the foot of the statue. I'm going to put, a bit of hard tack just to makes sense to me yeah okay abundantly you know cautious yeah absolutely uh, yeah. yeah forgive me one other question did you describe what position the saint is in like you know is the is he holding out buns i didn't is, he, you know... he's actually um in a very modest pose um uh, he's dressed in friar's robes and um he's got his hands are hidden in um like drooping robes you know what i mean like you you know like he's just in that sort of penitent uh, you know what I mean, like where you kind of shove your hands into your into your sleeves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he seems to be yeah. uh, made of stone, or yeah, he's to be made. Of, yep, stone. Um, it's stone. not it's okay. not the best work. Uh, you know, it's you know pr rel relatively rudimentary. Yeah. Seems to have like a beatific smile of general blessing upon his face, sort of thing. I, I want to take my staff and just kind of tap the dais that the statue is on, in a circle around it to see if I hear anything that sounds hollow. Uh, not that you can hear. Just, but the the sounds of stone ring rings throughout the uh, the echoing chamber. But I'd like to make a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, actually, that's that's the thing that I'm I'm curious about. Does there seem to be any? Um, I mean, obviously, there's the stairwell, the spiral stairwell going up. But mm -hmm. um, uh, any hint of a, a like a cellar door or trap door or anything around? Uh, no, there does not appear to be. It appears to be smooth stone. So. You guys are doing everything correct. Like you're telling me specifically things that you're looking for. In which case, I'll just tell you this. I'll just telegraph it. If, if you hit on the thing that you're, if there's something there and you're telling me about where you're looking, I'll just tell you. It won't be a question of a roll. Right. Okay. A so giant you, that, pile of gold. Th 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 that's guaranteed. But um, you can also do a sort of general check by just saying, I search like this particular 10 foot by 10 foot section of room. In which case, um, and if you don't leave it, if you don't make it more specific than that, then I will roll a d6, and then you have a, a one in six chance of finding, unless you have a, a class ability that heightens that. You so, what for intents and purposes, then, having given you the specifics that I, Mike, can think of, I like to make a search check for a, a you know around the statue to see if I can find hollowed out areas, alcoves, or anything like that. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. While he's doing that, John, what what Argus is thinking is maybe pacing out the room and trying to see if it actually is as big as the exterior and trying to work out whether there's like another room on the first floor. You mentioned a sacristy, whether like there's a little, you know, closet or coat room hidden behind somewhere. Yeah, there is not. Okay. Everything seems to be, you know, it's one big open space, one big open space. basically. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, so, so, some divided with some wooden. Was... What's go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, you sorry, did not I find did. anything on the statue. I, I would also like, while he's uh, checking out the statue, I'll pick uh, you know one side. Let's say the the right hand side of the room, and just uh, explore uh, the pews. Like kind of like look underneath the pews. Sure. You know, con concerned that maybe they're like kid skeletons. Oak the debris, that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, nope. You don't uh, don't see anything untowards. Everything looks relatively normal down here. I, I will say, guys, oh, that yeah. chances are with the gloaming being in this tower for as long, long as he probably was. I mean. If he's collected anything, it's all going to be sitting in one big pile somewhere, right? Like so, yeah. Well, I was imagining but, stuff that might have been left behind. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I wanted to search too. But right. um, yeah, all right. Why don't we head up? Let's test the stairs. Yeah, I'm ready to go upstairs. 
Um, I probably weigh less than most of you guys, so I will go first and tap. You tap the <laughs> <Yeah>. stair. <laughs> well, they're metal stairs, right? So they probably are pretty stable, I would think. But and the, kids are... going, the kids have been going up and down them all the time. So I think they're we're okay. But... So I'm going to keep – I'll tap the stairs like ahead of me before I go out and step on them, John, okay. and see if I can find any that are weak. Yeah. Um, do, do they do they seem uh, rusty at all, John? A little bit, yeah. But they but um, but they're also pretty much clear debris, at least down the the middle of the stairs, um, probably right. from the pitter patter of little feet numerous Ooh. times, right? Um, and so uh, they creak a little bit uh, whenever Elfric steps on them, but um, being careful and going up slowly, they seem to be holding relatively steady, and you're able to go up um, about ten feet up um, in through a hatch in the floor an open hatch in the floor into the uh the second floor so here you've actually you see actual signs of habitation um and it's quite obvious here that uh this was where the three children basically had their quarters so um the tower slowly sort of narrows a little bit as it goes up so this is this room is a little bit smaller in dimension but um the stairway by the way continues to go up um, there are a number of windows that are, there's basically like one small window on each of uh, the four sides. And there are, uh, uh, let's see, give me one second. Is the stairway like right in the corner? Yeah, basically in the corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is this all still one big room, John? Uh, yeah, it's all still one big room, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, so here you just see like it's it's like the the dirty remnants of like bed of you know makeshift beds. Um, it looks like they're made out of um, kind of horribly enough like the remains of something you know like like ragged clothes and uh, you know of shrouds maybe for dug up from graves and stuff like that. You know, it's uh, uh, just whatever they could basically find. Um, they collected and put together to kind of form these rudimentary beds. Um, they have, uh, you see that there is a number of uh, like scattered teeth that are around, obviously human teeth. There is some animal teeth as well. Um, uh, you see a number of carcasses of small animals that are here that have been partially eaten, or it looks like actually um, almost like roughly taxidermied in some sort of way. You know what I mean? Like they've been like, like the insides have been sort of torn out and then like stuffed with stuff to try to make them look okay. But there, but there's only a couple. There's like three or four of them, right? Uh, like, but it's it's very sort toys? of like, it's like whoa, yeah. Um, and then like, uh, playing uh, with them or something, John? Yeah, maybe. Uh, gross. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty awful. But uh, um, a lot of a lot the, of the mud, ones... a lot of dirt. Um, you know that's that sort of stuff. So just like just debris and. Ones that look eat like they were being eaten. Does it look like bites or like animal like? It looks like like, like, like crows biting it or kids biting. Like it. kids biting it. Yeah. Is there a fire yeah. or evidence of a fire in this room? Like, or were they eating it raw? Uh, it looks like they were eating it raw. Yeah. You're yum. Yeah, it's we don't need to tell them about that part. Yeah. yeah. Kids are gonna uh, have worms. <laughs> John, can I uh, start by just like carefully turning up the bed, sort of like mounds seeing if there's any sort of uh detritus hidden within the clothes that might have been forgotten a pocket known markings anything i would recognize like a ring on it's a finger bone, they may want to have return sure right? so or, like yeah when i say this like I, I don't mean like the room is scattered with all this stuff it's like there's just a little bit like there's a tooth sure. here a tooth there that sort of thing there are definitely like no like finger bones or anything like that um but there is just a great amount of like like kid to try this around like there's just a bunch of scraps and stuff like that and um sticks and stones sure. and all that sort of stuff so um i'm just uh, searching if they like hit anything in their sheets yes yep. we might call sheets you should here. all poke around yeah well indeed while they're actually poking around though i'm gonna go halfway up the next stairs and and listen for any sounds upstairs okay while you guys all right, so I will say that, uh, Snell, you do find something when you are poking through the detritus, but at the same time, Elfric, when you were halfway up the stairs listening, um, as you, uh, you're you trying to hear over your friends kind of rustling through stuff, you hear what appears to be something like regularly like clacking against each other, like, you know, click, 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 every once in a while up there. 
That doesn't sound I, good. Kind of That's got to be good. I kind of stab my fingers, tap my ear, and say, and point up. So, at Does the it sound metallic? Does it sound like bone? Does it, it sounds sound like, like bones. wood? Sounds like bones. Bones or bones or wood? Yeah. You said Snell found something. Yes. So Snell, uh, underneath one of the uh, makeshift bed rolls, you actually find what appears to be a scrap of parchment. This is the only piece of parchment that you've seen here in the Abbey Room so far. Please be a fireball scroll. Please be a fireball <laughs> scroll. Mm -hmm. uh, I will take a look at it. Okay. So uh, looking at it, you. Uh, it's just like a like a shredded piece, right? Like it's not like sure. furled up with the, you know, it's sure. um, but it's like a shredded piece, and you see that part of it is gone, obviously been torn, but you can make out what appears to be a crude charcoal sketch of what looks to be a chap, like the floor plan of a chapel. All right. Ah, nice. So, and just by the way, in in my campaign in my world here, uh, uh, chapels and churches have the exact same layout as Christian chapels and churches. I just, you know, so it has like the layout of the cross. I just say like the revelator, you can kind of like draw a circle around like the transept, you know, in your mind. You know what I mean? So sure. I just, we'll yep. just, we'll yep. leave it at that. Make it easy. Um, <laughs> so there is a, the um, floor plan of like a, of a, of a chapel in the shape of a cross with the transept and all that sort of stuff. Um, very, very rough. Um, do you know what the chancel is in a, in a floor, in a church, right? It's like the rounded, it's like where, where Christ's head would be. Yeah. On, on the cross, right? So the, the rounded uh, very end of of a church. There is an arrow that is pointing to the chancel. Gotcha. Okay. Just a very rough drawing, right? And then on the other side of the parchment, there is some writing. Um, and it is in uh, Woldish, which is common. And it says, On the vanquishing hand, access to the sacrificial bounty. Vanquishing hand access on the vanquishing hand what sacrificial bounty on the vanquishing hand access to the sacrificial bounty yeah and it's in a very it the the that was written in ink in a much okay. more florid and fluid and practiced hand okay than the charcoal drawing does it appear to be older uh I don't know how I would discern the age of the charcoal versus the ink. But is it is it worn in a way that would indicate the ink was there prior to the charcoal? Yeah, you, you get that feeling, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Vanquishing hand, um, because I'm kind of versed in the Pelagiac, Pelagiatic church, does that ring a bell? Is that like the right hand of the Savior or something like that? Like, is it a vanquishing hand? Is there a story about the vanquishing hand that... You don't know for, you don't know for certain, but uh, there was in the stories that are told about Saint Cluid, um, which you know this whole abbey is dedicated to. Uh, uh, he was he was oftentimes called like the vanquisher of evil because of the fight that he had with this um, this Atticorn, apparently on this very site. Uh, that's that's now they could be completely unrelated, but because you're in the Abbey of Saint Cluid, you're when you see like on the vanquishing hand and you associate it with a with the church, it's like maybe that's Saint Cluid that they're talking about. Okay. So the the other building where we met the hunters that was the actual church here on the Abbey site. That right? was the chapel, yeah. This is mm -hmm. like a spare chapel here in the bell tower. This is a shrine. So, like, that, 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 the big one is a chapel, and what you guys are in is a bell tower of which the ground floor is a shrine. Okay, so presumably, the chapel would have a statue or possibly a you know, mosaic or something like that of Saint Cluid. We would guess. We didn't notice anything like that when we were briefly in there, spooking all the ghost ravens. I think you, a couple you, of you, us went in. No, you didn't go in. Remember, you were you stood out there, and Snell called out. And then the, oh, tra the trappers right. came came yeah, out and right. were like, "Shh, yeah. be quiet." Okay. So you never gotcha. actually stepped foot in there. All right. So we dig around the rest of the room, turning over beds and piles of debris, and yeah, you find nothing else of interest like... within this uh, room. John, is there is there any indication of what this room uh, had originally been? Like... Uh, it looks like the based upon like the debris and stuff like that, that this was probably the. Um, the quarters of like a low ranking member of the Abbey. Possibly it could have been some like judging by the fact that it's up, up, up a little bit high. It may have been someone who was in charge of perhaps looking over the, the Eastern gate, right. When it went, when it once existed, you know, 
like a minor a minor functionary or maybe someone just the warden of the tower itself you know but it looks like right. like one person's private chamber um which is uh big room yeah which is which isn't bad for for you know for one member of an abbey you know a little there there are um uh, windows here that I guess are, are open to the element. Like we're not having any issue with uh, light at present, right? Like light. I mean, no, like no. But like I said, it is a leaden sky, so it's nothing's too bright in here. Right. Um. What is chittering above? No, nothing on the window sills. The war. I guess the floor would be wooden here, right? Oh, the floor is wooden. That's correct. Yeah. And the ceiling is wooden. Yes. So looking up at the ceiling, you know, is there? Uh, chandelier or lanterns or anything hanging? No, or, or any signs of obvious like rot or weak places or holes in the floor up there? Uh, nothing that looks like it would cave in. It doesn't look like it's in the best shape. You know, it's very very right. old wood, but um, you know, lots of lots of cobwebs and things like that. But all right, looks solid. I will come back down and let one of the big burly guys go up ahead of me <laughs> and just kind of tell them what I heard. Yeah. You want to scissors, paper, rocks for it, Hal Halifax? I'll just, I'll just go. I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. Okay. Halifax marches up uh, in this chamber. Right behind you, man. So you in this chamber, you see the full panoply of what it means to be an obsessive gloam, basically. And it's quite horrifying. So you, you enter into this much smaller room. Uh, the stairways once again go up. Uh, you can f he you. Uh, there is rain that is uh, pattering down through open air uh, at the in the ceiling of this room, and basically hitting like the steps, like a hole floor. in the roof. Uh, well, there's like a another hatchway, but it's like open to the air basically all the way. I should have actually said like there is a little bit of rainfall going all the way down, um, but uh, but it's, it's much more prevalent here. Um, you have a feeling that up above you is probably the belfry itself, right? Um, so. But um, in this room, it looks, th this look, used to be obviously like the bell rigging chamber, right? Like, uh, so, you know, the, the big rope would have come down here and all that kind of good stuff. But hanging uh, from the, the threads of the differing bell, the, of the remains of the bell ropes that used to be here are all of these uh, macabre, awful looking mobiles right mobiles that are sort of slowly turning in the wind and the rain um and they are uh these strange disturbing dioramas um of strange creatures and humanoids that have, have these outsized they're, they're tiny little things but they all have like these human teeth that have been completely arrayed in full sets of human teeth so they're like these big you know grins you know, that are, <laughs> you know, and then they're, they're draped with teeth as well. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, and they're just so like slowly swinging in the, in the slight wind here. Um, it looks like they've been glued into the, the mouths. Um, you also see that there are some more finished like woodland creatures, uh, you know, chipmunks and squirrels and birds taxidermy. and stuff like that. Yeah, this weird, uh, uh, much more finished state of taxidermy. Uh, but they're like not well done, anyways. But they've been sewn up roughly. They're kind of bloated in all the wrong parts. Like, you know, the squirrel's tail is dangling, like, you know, like completely deflated, but its belly is like distended. Um, there's a bird that, uh, that's beak has been basically pried open and a full set of teeth glued into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that like human teeth put in everything. <laughs> yeah, ah. human teeth and everything. Yeah, um, and they're all. Got an and artist. Was, and of course, you know, it's not that they're 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 hung from like their necks. You know what I mean? So they're slowly spinning like hanged men, sort you know, sort of thing. And it's and just and basically you kind of have as you kind of stand up into the chamber, you kind of have to wade through, you have to pry them apart like beaded curtains, basically, as you're making mm. your way through here. Oh, this is delightful. Did anyone did anyone bother to uh, cut open? the stuffed animals down on the second floor which we should probably check them out see what's inside um so as we move into the room i i would i would i would call down uh, uh creepy creepy but clear yeah <laughs> I, want to see, you know, can I just like using the spearhead slice whatever holds them up and just let them collapse and clear some space here yeah you can do that yeah Ting, 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 yeah. Ting, 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 ting. yeah, I don't want these hanging yeah. and biting, you know. 
Sure. Uh, so I'll cut some down, make some room, move okay. in, and uh, you know, stick sticking to the edge, like the perimeter of the room, kind yeah. of work my way around. Yeah. So basically, what happens here, and um, I, I myself don't know, which, which should be kind of fun, is that there, um, as you cut these things down, you see that um, some of them kind of burst open, and indeed, some of the like they weren't sewn together that well. Um, treasure actually spills out of uh, of the guts, the innards, ca cavities, these things, and some of them there were actually you realize now because you had to wade through so you can see them all were actually sort of shish kebabed on rope as well. So there was like, you know, like like a creature. And then like a string of coins and then a creature and then, you know what I mean? So everything hits the ground as you spear through them like ting, ting, ting. And like you just see like a pile of awfulness, but also like sweet glinting treasure as well. So um, we're going to do an extremely old school thing. I'm going by treasure type of this creature. We oui. um, So here's your choice we can do because I don't know what it's going to be either. Um, I have a the OSE uh, official SRD open and I can just click a button on treasure type E. And it'll generate all the percentages and actually give us a full treasure thing. Or if you want to be exciting, you can um, I can give you what percentages to roll and see if, and have the fate of the treasure be in your hands. It's fun. I oh. want that. <laughs> I, I want, want that. it. <laughs> yeah, say, uh, as soon as he, uh, Argus realizes there's there's coin to be had by cutting strings, he cuts them all, and the, you should roll the dice. Do you want me to do it? All right, God. Sorry, nobody wants to play your horrible gambling game. Oh, no, like, I'm the only one that does though. <laughs> I, 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 I'm with David. I, I, I would, I would. It's fun I would that know. way. Come on. You want to roll? You want to roll it? Yeah, you guys can do all the rolling then. I don't want any responsibility for the 46 coppers we're going to find. <laughs> <laughs> that is precisely what I want responsibility for. I'm hoping it's at least 20. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, uh, you don't know how many years it has been since I rolled on a treasure table, and it is extremely satisfying. So. Uh. Uh, treasure type. You're roll, Matt. Is it you? Yeah, Matt, uh, you can roll. Do you want to do e, it? How, on, many, how many rolls uh, do we need, John? E, just e one? by the okay. way. Oh, no. Oh, no. E, e is a, is a, e is a tasty. A statue that was e, sewn inside his world. E is a tasty, uh, a tasty, uh, treasure type. Put it that way. Uh, but you do have to make the percentages to actually get this stuff. All right. Nice. Um, so. I'll write it down, guys, as it comes through, okay? This is, um, for percentages for something to appear, it's actually all, uh, percent. So I need, um, so get your D100s out. Um, are we doing it on Albert? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it on Albert. Al okay, then let me just switch over to there real quick. How many rolls are dice we doing tray? Uh, make sure, um, make sure, Matt, that your your sharing is public, right? Like the world, the world icon is not slashed through. Like uh, I did last time. It's not slashed through. Do a, a test D six just to. Sure. How many How many rolls are there, John? At a four, did you see that? Uh, I see seven. it. Seven. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't. Okay, so it doesn't pop on my end here. Ah, well, all right. So viewers won't John, be able to see it. Okay. What's up? Do these rolls include the ones on the second floor? Can we just say for the sake of it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the Gloam's treasure is what we're rolling okay. for. All right. Okay, so first one is 5%. So I need to roll a five or lower? That's correct, yeah, 5%. Yeah, for the Magi, the Magi. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. 100. What, what if he does it? Comes a four, baby. Okay, we'll close. 37. 37. 37. Not going to do it. Okay, roll 30%. Right. You want to do the next one? Better, better. I'll do the next one, sure. Okay. We'll just take turns. 61. 61, no good. 25%. I get this one. 25, I can do it. I can do it. Go, baby. Oh, 28! 28 is not going to do it. 25% oh. again, please. I'll do the next one. Come on, David. 138 is not correct. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> you you got to clear happen. out the old one. Yeah. Do I? How do I do this? X? It actually okay. cost us money. <laughs> yeah. I, like, wait, like, I throw money Yeah. Uh, straight out the window. I get a 23. Ooh, a 23. Ooh, there well, you go. That's a good one to, to succeed on. Roll me 1d8, Snell. Or someone roll me d8. Oh, you, you got a step for it. Go ahead. Right, Snell. Hoppers. I did the two. Two? Yeah. yeah. 2,000 gold pieces are, hey, are yeah. scattered amidst the upper floors here. Now I wish I, I'd rolled an eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, amazing. Okay, cool. 
All right, uh, ten percent. Okay, I can do this one. I can do it. I can do. I can cool. do it. I can do it. Eighteen. Oh, so close. All right, another ten percent. Uh, I feel it. I feel it. My so I'm David. Feel it. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Nope. And lastly, twenty-five percent. Five. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> oh no, not even close. Sixty-six. Okay. Well. <sighs> 2,000 gold pieces is no small amount of change. That's awesome. That is double yeah. what you got from Lady Haramore for bringing her word over. Yeah, man. It's over wicked. Down. All right, I'll, but, I got a big old sack that I brought with me, so I'll start filling it up with gold. Uh, I also have a large sack, so we can... Uh... Yeah. Who else has a large sack? Anyone? Anyone? I'm not. I'm not. My sack not. is extra large. <laughs> I'm not. I guess you get nothing, Snell. I... <laughs> we'll, we'll get a gold. backpack. All right. Great. Now, now we just got to well, convince the guys outside, you know. That we didn't find anything. We didn't Here, find anything. Here's what we should do. We carry it back to town. As soon as we get that cha-ching for the XP, then we can disperse money to the rest of the group. Wait, what? <laughs> Why? Well, the rest of us are like, what does that mean even? I, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Um now the widow is orf widows and orphans fund for uh, the knights, man. They're going to want something. Um, John, what was our potential loot gain for those other treasure tables that we didn't hit? Don't even ask. They're not, we're not going to go there. Um, I got to know, John. I got to fucking know. I can't. So, first I won't of all, be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> you, are you actually complaining about getting 2,000 gold as the only treasure you got? No, I mean, I didn't, all right, I so complaining that I didn't get the wand of sleep that I know is issue, right there. Issue, uh, issue, first of all, is that um, if you're actually going to attempt to not obviously show that you are carrying out a massive amount of coins you have an issue because a large sack is which is what you have correct uh, Ted has a large sack i have a large a sack. large sack carries, large sack. that carries 600 coins well well i have a backpack how many coins can i carry in that well depends on what you have in your backpack it can hold up to 400 coins but that's if it's empty well I think it makes sense to ditch everything else that's in my backpack and fill it up with fucking money, right? Um, <laughs> could be. Well, I actually uh, have two large sacks. If we assume that whatever Lady Haramore gave us was already in a sack, then I still have a second sack. With money in it. No, no. I, have, I brought two sacks. Yeah. If what Lady Haramore gave us was already in something, I still have two sacks. Right. She didn't just dump the gold on the ground. Right. I'm assuming she gave it to us in a. Yeah, but I'm saying there's, but there's her money is in that sack. Why? No, 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 no. She gave us two sacks from day one. I've had two sacks. Oh, oh okay, gotcha. Related to Haramore's. Yeah, she she wouldn't have given us coins. She would have given us. Right. Yeah. So if in she somewhere. gave us that money in a sack, I still have two sacks. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I have I have one. And he's got one. So that's eighteen hundred coins right there. Davey, what kind of sack do you have? Do you have any sack? <laughs> I I have all of the uh uh robes uh that are converted into bed uh bedding on the second floor that I'm gonna tie up with uh, segments of rope and turn into a sack. Gross. So oh all my right. god. That's John, a, I'm gonna get rid of like, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of all the shit in my backpack that takes up a lot of space, like rope fifty feet, iron rations, shit like that. I'm gonna dump it on the ground and fill that with with the remainder of the gold that we need. We need two hundred gold for in my backpack, basically. Okay, so I'll say, um, I'll say if you dump the rope, you can have the gold. Done, sold. Okay. Cool. All or right. can I just tie the rope in a coil around my body and just like loop it around my shoulders? You sure. can give me the rope. I'll carry it for you. I'll give. I'll give. I'll give David the rope. Okay. Cool. Okay. He throws you the whip. <laughs> I, I, Come on. I ghost ride it. I ghost ride it all the way down. Uh, nice. Anyway. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. All right. I get it. Five old guys playing games. On, <laughs> you're not. You're not giving us a deep cut Dude, here. Come I know. But that movie was from the same year that this game was created. 1981. All right. There you go. Anyways. Uh, so all right. So there you go. Do you go up to the belfry or are you uh, heading back? 
I think we um, gotta go up to the belfry. Of course, we go up to the belfry. We should well, at least get the here first. Yeah. How, how do these? Uh, do the stairs look? Uh, I mean, these seem to be more exposed to the elements. Are they worse for wear? Yeah, they're they're heavily rusted. Um, Maybe we should leave all the heavy money on this floor. I agree. And then go peek up there. A hey, uh, uh, skinny little wizard with uh, no armor on. Why don't you? Uh, I'll do it. Try. I'm actually probably stronger than you, just so you know, bro. Okay, so you. You, so you you creep up uh, the rusty so they creak and moan as you go up there um and you are on uh like uh, you know a, a, a damp uh, there there is a roof obviously but it's a belfry right so they're like large arched windows that basically are completely exposed to the air on all four sides so very open to the elements there's rain everywhere um around you and um it's very uh uh bleak looking up here the wood is rotted through um, and, but there is a gigantic bronze bell that is right there in the center with frayed ropes that are draping down to the floor beneath you. Um, and, uh, it looks like it is in still in functional shape and it looks like it would be in it. It is solid bronze, which means it's worth money. Um, and, uh, it, but what's strange here is that despite the fact that it has been a, rookery for god knows how long there are no droppings anywhere at all yeah oh yeah uh spiritual spiritual crows don't poop and there but there are a lot of um strange like claw like small claw and talon marks that are scored in the stone um all over the place like in the wood and on the stone and everything i'm gonna back back down i'm not going i'm not going all the way up to step on the floor i'm gonna stay on the stairs i'm gonna poke my head up above the hatchway mm. do i see anything <laughs> that screams at me take me our money or anything like that right the bell the bell but the bell is probably like three thousand pounds it's fucking heavy yep but it's worth it you get it's it's in really good shape we'll come back with a with a oxen team or something to bring the bell back but we're not bringing that back unless we get a a really really cool bag of holding here in the next which is probably on the treasure list that we just did so something as you're kind of lowering back down you're kind of like sizing up like could we take that thing um you feel you see something out of your peripheral vision just sort of flutter down onto your shoulder and fall off and you look i look i look up john you look up hold my torch up Okay, you see uh, something else fluttering down in the wind towards your shoulder is just a, a black raven's feather. Uh, time to go. Time to go. No, no, it's not time to go. We're fine. They're coming back. The gloom crows yeah. are coming back. The time one that go. fell on his shoulder originally goes down the stairwell, and you can see it kind of catches the light as it hits the ground and at your guys' feet, who are all looking up at at Elfric. Well, this looks like there's a nest up there. Like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, <laughs> big, big nope for me, dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. Well, Snell's just going to take a quick look look with his magnifying glass and see if it looks like there's any sort of nest, like a, a normal bird's nest up there. You're going to look at nope. a magnifying glass like 30 feet you know away. I'm just... <laughs> That's how they work, look, I think. I don't, fully, I don't fully understand how this wizard's technology works. Snell's a simple, <laughs> simple country boy, all right? All I know is... Small things big, all right. Small things big. <laughs> big, big, small in the things class. big. So you go up, you go all the way up past Alfred to the Belfry. Yeah, fuck well, that, guys. Let's get our money and get out of here. We yeah, got our we got back over the shoulder, shoulder, going down the stairs. Now, there, does the brain injury, be, <laughs> there does not appear to be any uh, nest up there. So there's we we I can't discern a source for these feathers. No. Do, do the ropes from the bell go all the way down, or are they staying in that floor? No, they go down to the floor where the where all of the treasure was. From you know what might be or... awesome? Just, like, we yank on the bell as we... <laughs> <all> <laughs> the and then just see if it falls, like, like plummets just three stories down. Oh, yeah, like, like, oh, no, like the, like the Tim Burton it. Batman. Yeah. Spent, uh, I you know, I, I'm sure if we were to spend about two weeks, we could rig up an elaborate like, kind of, like, pulley system sure. and get that bell down to go sell. I don't want to yank it down, but I do want to see if there's a means of ringing it. In, in two weeks, dude, I'm not going to have a face anymore. So. There is. I probably should have described it better. Like, there would have been, like, a like an opening in the center of the floor above you, you know, where the ropes were hanging down in order to pull. But whatever. I don't think we should. I, th- I think that the uh, the knights down below might see it as some kind of warning or something. I don't think we should. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll see the loot. All right. Okay. So, uh, basically, that's it for the tower. Um, uh, only the last question just before you leave. Are you going to ring that bell? I want to so badly. Do it, fucking do it, dude. 
No one else wants me to do it, though. I'm, I'm already down to the ground floor, man. I'm... <laughs> yeah, man. Argus sees that feather. He's like, fuck it. Yep. Gone. That's, that's a gloom coming back. I'm out of here. Because okay. I'm not convinced that thing was totally defeated. It could reform still. And I'm very concerned. What about if it. what if this bell is imbued with some protective, you know? Bring uh, it, bro. Just bring it. <laughs> then ring it. Then ring it. <laughs> you know what you should do? Uh, you should take my 50 foot length of rope, tie it to well, the end of, the, of the bell, and then go out the door and ring it from there. That's a great idea. I'm, I know I'm a yeah. wizard. I'm smart. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to go to the hatch and sort of hide. And I'm going to pull it <laughs> and see what happens. So you're going all the way down with uh, yeah, the yeah. rope? No, I'm no, all help. the way. I'm, I'm going to go you. down past the hatch. I'm going to keep my eye sort of like... One floor down? Yeah, I'm just like on the stairs sort of looking up. I'm going to ring it. Yeah, and see if anything. Okay. Oh, you're not going to go out of the tower? Oh, you're no, down. I'm not going to leave the whole tower. I'm just going to go no, store to store down. You're going to die. Wait, right, so are you so just to be clear, are you in the room with the teeth dolls or are you in the room where the kids slept? That is not a, <laughs> that is a terrifying question for you to be asking me. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you signed on tonight, you didn't think you'd be here that way. <laughs> I am in the uh, I'm, I'm in the teeth dolls. Room. Okay, so you're in the room that 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 was the bell pulling chamber. That's where you would normally pull a bell. Yeah, that's, that's where you want to be. That's okay, so I'm you at. don't need to you don't need extra rope to do it. There's rope dangling there. Okay, I that's, pull it. Yeah, um, actually, you probably Wait. would because um, Argus actually He's waiting for us to be out because we're not waiting. He's waiting for us to be out. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So you guys yeah. are just yeah. We're, we're you're out in the rain. It. You're waiting. Don't for think me to come you down. should pull that rope, but good luck if you do. <laughs> okay. Um, the, by the way, when you guys leave and come out, you see that all of the um, uh, the knights have basically um, are gone. Like they, they've gone back down the path. But when you kind of look over the edge of the crumbled wall down the, over the edge, and you can see the road down below you through the um, the leafless canopy of trees, you can see them sort of collecting themselves and getting ready to march. And like a lot of them are. Um, They've got like their cloaks up and all that kind of stuff, and they're like ready and they're restless. The horses are breath is coming out, and you see like a couple of them actually spy you, and they like they hail you from down on the road. They're like, "Hey, I'll wave back." Yeah. I'd be like, you know, five minutes. We're on our right. way. Okay. Um, then Snell pulls the bell. Snell, I need you to roll me a d6 and let me know <laughs> if you just tell me what you roll. You better owl bear that, buddy. <laughs> you want me to bear it? Okay, I'll bear it. Hold on. All right. Is it inquiring? That's a four. That's a four. Okay, cool. So you pull it, um, and you, you know, you pull it down, swings, and then bubble. You know, just you know, big dirge like bell, um, like echoes out. All of the horses down below, guys, as you're looking over, they all rear. A couple of knights actually like have a problem like um, holding, you know, maintaining their saddle, maintaining their seats. And um, and you hear a fluttering, like a massive fluttering, coming not from the bell tower, but from the chapel, and uh, from from across the, the way. And, and as the echoing sort of rings out, you um, all of you guys see kind of bursting out of the front door of the chapel and out through what appears to be like the broken beams of of the chapel and the roof are uh, dozens of crows, but these crows are actually like this ghostly green, sort of like, a, you know, like a trans, like a transparent, ethereal sort of shape, as if they're not really real. Um, and as they kind of fly out and over you and off into the distance, you actually see them phasing in and out of the material plane, right? Like they're like black green, black green, you know what I mean? Like, vroom, 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 as they kind of flap their way out, uh, screeching. Cool. Um, in and um, anger as they were disturbed, and you have a feeling that this is what the what the trappers were after originally. But they do not. I mean, other than the fact that they are crows, they do not resemble in any way, shape, or form the gloam. They don't. They don't form like a murmur. Nothing vaguely humanoid. It's just that they're right. equally equally okay. strange in the fact that they seem to be ethereal at the same. Or, or the same. I uh, I gingerly walk out of the tower and say, "Well, boys, I cleared out the chapel. You're welcome." <laughs> uh, and, uh, like, I'm done. I'm done. You, you hear cursing down below, echoing through the forest. <laughs> have multiple voices. All right. All right. Cowboy yep. up. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Okay. 
So um, you join, rejoin your companions down on the road. Uh, they all look at you very sternly. None more so sternly as Brother uh, Reverend Gastantius, of course. Very disapproving of unnecessarily uh, waking the spirits of the dead in this unholy place. And he makes the sign of the revelator. Um, well, uh, we left an offering for St. Wode, though. We did. That was well. And you... I, I told him not to. <laughs> and... Uh, the, the kids look frightened once again. They're a little bit in better spirits because they are a little bit warm um, and they've been comforted by Lady Eleanor and all that kind of good stuff. And so you're going to make your way. And they're like, hold on tight, kids. And you fucking tear ass back towards uh, Prigboard, right? There is no hex exploring or anything like that, right? Nope. Fast nope. as you possibly can go. All right. Give me one moment, please. Huzzah. As I check for encounters. Huh. Dun, 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 dun. John, what kind of horses are we on? Are we on riding horses? Riding horses. That's why you can go so fast. Yeah, I thought so. This is Craggy Forest, and the next hex over is Tangled Forest. <laughs> Checking. Reticulating splines. <laughs> uh, working. See. Working. Got a little bit of that action, then we got a little bit of this action, and then we got a little roll of bit of this action. Got it. All right. Cool. Okay. So uh, let me switch over to the Albear map here so folks can see where you're going. Owly, owly, owly. Okay. So you are going from the Abbey back along the Swinney Road to Prequart. Um, and you tear ass. Uh, this is basically the afternoon time now. We'll say you probably, I would say, given the exploration and the time it takes to get everything ready to go, you probably get back on the road more closer to two. Um, and, uh, so, but it would take you, um, only about four hours or so to get back to town. Um, if that actually, uh, let's see. We're going straight to Prigwart, right? Not, not right. Way up there. Actually, it would yeah, take you less than that. We're going to keep on going to Castle Harrowmore, right? Six, we're not going to stop. Six, nine, twelve. Yeah, I think we're right. continuing through. So it takes you well, a I think quarter we of the day. So it'd only take you like two hours, actually. Okay. Uh, it, you are going right... Well, if you want to go directly to Harrowmore Keep, that means you're going off road for a part of it. No, no, no. I mean, hit Prigward and then go up to the keep. Like, we're not staying yeah, or anything. You're not staying yeah. at Prigward. The so Ele Lady Eleanor was not planning on staying in Prigward. Yeah, okay. she planned to keep riding. Is that right? Yeah, I like once again like the game versus what's reality. Like I, I, I'm not going to lead you to where you want to go. So. Uh, if that's you want to, if you want to stop in Prigwort, you can. No, that's well, not. We want to arrive at Harrowmore Keep with the entire entourage. Right. Like, that's well, right. if, if they continue yeah. through, we're going to go with them. Okay. Yes. Right. So there is a little bit of a debate when they come charging back into Prigwort because they, you know, literally in the same day, you went you the, the morning you were in Harrowmore Keep, freezing rain. They charged through here because of the urgency of getting uh, getting the kid to, to safety. Um, now that there's a little bit less urgency, there is a little bit of debate between the knights about like, it would be nice to warm up <laughs> before we go on. Maybe the weather would be nicer, uh, you know. But then um, uh, more, some of the more strident vo uh, voices, which would be Lady Eleanor and Brother Reverend Gustantius, are both like, we need to get the child back to her mother as soon as possible. It doesn't matter if it's raining; we're moving. Um, so uh, unless you guys tr uh, try to talk them down from that course of action, that's what they would like to do. No, Halif we're... Halifax would be very much on that team. Okay. Also. Yeah. Yep. All right. So um, uh, maybe just before, you, you, I, I just want to be very. It's a rough. It's like an extremely rough day of travel, right? Right. You, it, like there's an extremely stressful situation right in the middle of it, um, but it is freezing rain, right? Like you are sodden to the bone. So uh, what I will say is, is that should anything happen before you actually bed down for rest at the end of the night i'm going to give you basically minus ones to everything like attacks saving throws ability checks anything that you basically would roll a die for searching like the the fatigue and misery of being sodden to the bone i think i think that's a reasonable thing to apply how long a ride is it from prig ward to harrow more keep it's another couple hours uh at most really um on those horses uh i mean they do 48 miles a day so yeah it's like yeah Maybe, maybe like an hour, an hour at most, I would say. I can't remember. I think we time. press on for an hour, man. We, we got to press on for an hour and get the kid home. 100%. You know, I, I mean, I guess, John, does it look like the have made it that way 
Like they're not in any um, uh, danger if we press on forward to get them home. If they were like the kids, very fragile. Maybe we'd want to warm them up. Right. But if they can make yeah. it if they're wrapped around in cloaks and stuff. If they can, yeah, make yeah, it. kids yeah. are healthy. If the kids are healthy, yeah, yeah, re- they're yeah. relatively healthy. Yeah, but um, sure. eating raw meat but, and shit like that. But yeah, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, they can make it. Okay, so uh, you once again. Within the span of hours, like you come back through the western gate and you run through town and um, out through the northern gate past the Clash Antler, and everyone's just like diving out of the way once again as you return. No one, the kids are all like bundled up like Frodo in Lord of the Rings, you know, like, so that like, no one really, no one really sees the kids really um, as uh, as you tear through town again. Um, and once again, you are all talk of the town, and you tear up through the Haramore Road, which is a much uh, narrower, uh, little bit more treacherous road. Back up to the keep, which is perched upon the tall cliffs uh, overlooking the groaning lock, um, and you enter back in. And uh, we won't take it. We won't take it moment by moment. But basically, what happens is, is they tear through the gate, um, and they immediately call out to the, the to the house staff who come rushing out. And um, the whole place, the attitude of the whole place changes in an in- instant. Uh, what you were used to being it was like a stark, sort of melancholy, very austere sort of place becomes uh, immediately like. The, the word just runs rampant through the keep that the, that that Violet has returned, um, that two of her playmates have also been found as well. But it's just like the young the young heir has been found. Raise the, you know uh, raise the uh, not the alarm the you know spread the word spread the good cheer and uh, it goes everywhere. And within moments, of course, within minutes, uh, Lady Haramore herself um, comes uh, uh, striding almost. Like, it's only her nobility which keeps her from breaking out into a full run comes uh, uh, striding down the hallway and um, uh, she, uh, Violet res- uh, wrestles herself out of Lady Eleanor's grip and just goes plowing directly into into her arms, um, just sobbing, of course, and Lady Aramore does as well. And she can't believe, you know, stroking her hair that, um, you know, my, my child, my, I can't believe my child has been returned. And she, like, holds her at arm's length and, and, and returned to me. Th- and she, she says, thanks to the saints that you were able to communicate me all this time. And Violet's like obviously confused. Like, I only just talked to you this morning. I forgot that I had the locket. I'm sorry, mommy. I, I forgot that I had it. I would have talked. And she's like, you've been talking to me every day. What are you talking about? You know, that this whole thing, right? Um, so there's confusion about that. Um, but she goes, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Um, and then she summons the staff members who are the parents of um, Will, Willie and Bilbrey, who are equally as happy. And it's just a, a very, very happy scene. Uh, so, and there was much rejoicing. Much rejoicing, yes. Uh, Reverend Constantius um, is uh, is humble in only the way that a true, uh, a truly pious man is. Um, you were worried about him as like sort of you know because he has that fire of zeal in his eyes, right? That it would sort of be like his way or the highway sort of thing, right? But um, he shows his actual uh, that he follows the the uh, practices of of what of what he preaches right like he um he's a, he's a humble man in the end and he says that we could have not have done it if it was not for um uh for these gentlemen here leading us to where violet was um and uh thanks to the quick thinking of mr Drega there i was protected from the worst of the awful creatures attacks um thanks to the scroll that uh, he invoked at just the right time um and with the writings of Saint Cygnus himself, I was able to rid us of this creature for good. Um, that was be the dispel evil. Um, it was nobly done, my lord. Nobly done indeed. And uh, she thanks everyone equally. Um, you, all four of you, for bringing her back. Um, she gives a, a special um, uh, a special cool look, shall we say, to Halifax Swinney, like recognizing you as actually a member of her household that is part of this, this strange group. Um, and uh, she um, asks to have a quiet word with Lady Eleanor after this meeting is over um, in regards to Master Swinney's future. Um, and uh, uh, she declares in front of the entire retinue, um, the household staff and the big guys in charge there, Lady Eleanor and Reverend Constantius, that uh, uh, she is going to, for bringing back, for helping to bring back her daughter alive and well, she is going to award you with another thousand pieces of gold. Um, she is also going to give you let me just write that down so I don't forget Uh, reward for Violet okay and she is going to also she says if you have taken a liking 
to the horses that you've been riding. They are yours. <laughs> um, if you would rather have your pick of the stables, um, uh, I, I will have our groom show you as well. And mechanics wise, it means nothing. You can, <laughs> you, sure. yeah. But uh, you can get a flat. You, you, like... you do not. You do not have your. It, it must be a riding horse. You cannot get a draft horse or a war horse. Um, and then uh, she also says, um, "You guys, it, uh, remind me of this. You guys talk to her about the disease, right? Like, or did you hide yeah. the disease? Yeah, from yeah. Okay, that's yeah, what I thought. Had, so she was gonna get us she get us in, yeah. right. So she, what she does is she gives um, this. This is after a little while, right? Like you guys have dried off, gotten some fresh clothes, and your like your uh, uh, your um, relaxing in one of the salons. Um, uh, she has." Uh, someone get for her a, a writ that she actually stamps with her seal, um, with her signet ring the, into the into the thing, and also signs as well. The stamped writ that will gain you um, will gain the bearer right uh, an audience with the bishop sanguine. Um, and the bishop, the uh, sanguine is the uh, is the bishop of Dolmenwood. He's he's at the the bishop's palace, which resides next to the castle itself, um, and he is the he is. He's the bishop. He's the one that is in charge of the church in this general area of Dolmenwood. Um, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, he's, the, he's the only human being who is on par in power, in political power, um, as the duke himself. Right. Bishop Sanguine. So yeah. um, she warns you and she says that this is... Uh, I do not often give these writs um, because I do not like to be in debt to anyone. And so, uh, be aware that this, um, I, I do this reluctantly, but your, your situation is so dire. Um, I feel that it is, um, the least I can do is to get you an audience with this man. But, um, I have only met him briefly and never face to face, but, uh, I should warn you that my impressions of him was that he is a man, of uh, a very brittle man, shall we say, um, very, very rigid in his outlook and easily breakable. So just be wary um, that you may not find what you seek, but at least you will be able to get an audience with him. Um, uh, but uh, also realize that, that that this writ will only gain you audience with this man. Um, you cannot use it uh, for any other purpose. Um, and then lastly, right. she, lastly, and this may end up being the most valuable of all, she gives you her eternal gratitude for what you did. You now have uh, an in with one of the, uh, with one of the most powerful nobles in uh, Dolanwood. One of the great, right. the great high houses of Dolmenwood, um, and so that is mission accomplished, Ooh, done and good done. Good job, guys. Yes, you have saved Lady Violet. Well done. Can I? All right. Can I, I guess you're not a jive turkey after all. <laughs> uh, so this is um, just a real quick uh, mechanics thing for XP. Uh, I'm adjusting this a little bit. What what I said, uh, uh, and for those of you out there who are watching, may not know that it, uh, it is XP for gold. That is the vast majority of uh, of the XP that you gain is for bringing back gold to a safe haven. Initially, I had said that you had to bring it back to a safe town. Okay, but what I'm going to say now is that I'm going to be a little bit more broad. I'm going to say that you have to get the gold out of danger, which means you have to bring it to somewhere that is can be deemed by any reasonable person as safe. So that may mean like a well a well fortified or set up camp. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, like for instance, like if you were to go back to the Abbey and should you pull out more loot, if you should get back to the trapper's camp, I would consider you to be safe, safe enough. And then you would yeah. actually be able to collect the XP. You wouldn't have to go all the way back to Prig Ward. Okay. Gotcha. okay. Um, uh, but, but don't try to like gamify that. Don't try to like abuse that. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like needle, yeah, needle me on what safe means. You know what I mean? Um, nowhere, yeah, yeah. nowhere in a dungeon will you ever be safe. It doesn't matter how many iron spikes you put in the door. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. that's so it. if we were like, you know, say in Dreg and we robbed a crime lord, and you know what? what I mean, I'm just curious, like how you're thinking. Like, what would be considered safe? Like back to our tavern where we're staying. If you made it back to pre-war, yeah, definitely, you know. But, but if you, but if, we like if you, if you kind of dug, if you uh, rustled the underbelly of Dreg into a fury, 
uh, into your furor over stolen goods, you know, knowing that drag, uh, a lot of its business is done right. on, you know, then nowhere in drag would you be safe. Nowhere in drag. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and we would fill it out circumstance by circumstance and talk yeah, about yeah. it, but, um, but just in general, uh, get it out of harm's way and then you'll get the XP for it. Perfect. Okay. okay. John, uh, okay. one um, other uh, mechanical thing, one of the uh, benefits that Halifax has as a knight mm -hmm. is the ability to judge kind of the quality of steeds. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, sure. So mm -hmm. um, he would use that to make sure that, you know, since they were very generously offered, like any of these or the ones in the stable, mm -hmm. he'd try to pick the strongest ones that were available for the whole party. Right. Thank you, Halifax. Nice. Yeah, now this is much more. Need, that's very cool. I think it's. Red eyes. What, what Mike? Mike? Can mine be black with red eyes? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to name it Biscuit. Yeah, Entirely but... skeletal. Oh, I was going to name mine Truffle. That's fun. You, if you get one that's black truffle. with red eyes, you can't ride it over water, Mike. That, you know. <laughs> Elfric the Edge, the edge Lord. I, I a, 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 str a stride his nightmare <laughs> with flaming hooves. <laughs> what did Boba Fett do? <laughs> isn't that a, that's a Tuscan Raider, isn't it? Anyways, yeah. um, so the horsemanship ability, um, it's for this instance, uh, Matt, it's more, it's more like a, like a flavor thing, right? Uh, for for this, you uh, you determine whether an animal has low average or high hit points for its type is the actual mechanic that goes on. So. I mean, yeah, that's kind of cool, but I think it's much more for like the flavor sort of thing that um, you're like, uh, like Abel Coffin from uh, Wheel of Time, right? Like you're you're a horseman, you know how to judge horses. So you, um, uh, yeah, you're able to find. I don't I don't know the terms for like like roans and fillies and all that sort of stuff, but you find some sweet ones. Um, so whatever you guys uh, would like, as far as like the coloring and temperament of your horses, you may have them. Um, as long as they're something that we could actually foresee existing. Black with red eyes. Yes. <laughs> is it not that? Uh, and feel free to name your horse whatever you like. And they give you enough, um, you know, saddlebags, tackle, bridle, harness, all that sort of stuff as well. Okay. Um, so uh, always, well, this is a, a key thing in case you are going to go adventuring with your horses, that the, um, that the maximum load for those horses, um, that's like all told, right? That includes uh, I think our I, body, right? Yeah, your body, but what I'm saying is it's like you're you're basically limited to what your saddlebags can actually hold as far as like carrying loot on your horses, right? That's why it's good to have like a draft horse or a, a more mm. or or a pack mule, you know, where you've got the uh the we talked about this, right? The the tree on top of the mule yeah. and all that sort of stuff, right? We just that's we why you that's why you bought a mule, I think, right? Yeah, yeah we have we one. Did sell that bitch off. But now we could get it riding horse and put our gear on that and then it doesn't slow us down, right? Because uh, the mule doesn't move as fast as the riding horse. Right. But the mule, like... But yeah. you can't... The mule doesn't carry as much as a horse, but the horse also has to carry us, so... No, yeah, that's what the, I'm saying. We get a pack horse, Ted, instead of a, instead of a mule. Right? Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Like a draft horse, yeah. What I'm saying is the riding horse will not take what the mule is carrying, because it's not built right. for that. Right. It won't carry a tree. It, it it will balk it having to be loaded down with a bunch of strange objects and stuff like that. You know, it's it's meant to be ridden it's been broken for that reason, you know, that, you know, so, right. You know, and yeah, that might be not true to actual reality, but there's a clear delineation between a draft horse, a riding horse and a war horse and a riding horse meant to be ridden by men, not to load gear onto. Right. So you are limited to whatever your saddlebags can basically carry. And what I can reasonably assume that you could strap onto a saddle, like, you know, like an extra, a sack of coins. Uh, yeah. A sack of coins or something like that, but, right, okay. but you're not going to load up like a full, like, Cooking gear and tent and all that sort of crap. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. John, I need to go hit the head. I'll be back. Okay. No problem. Want to do a quick break? Want to do a break? Okay. We yeah. can do a break. All right. We will do a break and we will come right back. Okay. We're back. Uh, we're having a discussion about horses versus mules. Continue. Uh, so, okay. yeah. So, one of the things I was suggesting was uh, the mule, as much as I hate the stupid donkey, um, does have its uses and we're not in a hurry so if we know that we're going on a, a mission that's likely to have a bunch of heavy loot to carry around bring her um right now our next goal is to try to stay alive which is going to be more of a, a an issue where speed is of the essence right rather than yeah. tons and tons of loot 
All right. So, you know, we, if we can just, we, like, we can maybe the the, the, what, Mike? I agree with the following addendum. We need to have the proper supplies so that we don't have to sit there and like be like, well, do we not sleep well tonight? Or, you know, like, oh, yeah, we need firewood and tents and all the rest of that crap. Well, absolutely. Yeah. We should get that, uh, pick that up in Brigwort before we go down. But so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little that, confused. Hold on, David. Hold on. D John was saying that the, a riding horse would not carry a tent. Was that what you said? I, I'm just That's saying. I, I ask. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, of course it would carry like a, a folded up tent. I'm just saying that you're not going to get the benefits of a riding. Like a riding horse is never going to be clearly better than a mule. A riding horse is for riding and speed. A mule is for carrying shit. Right. And so you're not, I'm not going to like, you know, I know that a horse can carry a lot of stuff, but I'm just going to say that, you know, uh, you, you you have to kind of pick your poison, right? Like well, you, if you want speed, you do a riding horse. If you want to be able to carry your shit, you bring a mule. And that's that's the way it goes. Right. So I mean, basically, we're we're not going to take our backpacks, off, ba our backpacks, our our stuff off, and put it on the horse, because um, that's a mule's job. Yeah. It can yeah. carry us and our stuff, but we're carrying the stuff, and it's carrying us. Yeah. And I'm not going to be too harsh on it. I just want you to be clear that your horse is not a double as a, of a pack mule. It doesn't carry you. You know, it, it's just not going right. to. It's not a loot carrying device. You know what I mean? That's it's just not what right. It but a horse should be able to carry. You know, your bedroll, your food, your water, your yeah, tent. But it's not going to carry like a bronze bell. And it, no. <laughs> you know, it's no, not going to It's not going to carry. You're not bringing stone from the quarry with. with, with yeah, uh, you're not carrying a dragon sword worth of treasure out, that sort of thing, on a riding right. horse. You know, I mean, it's just okay. not going to happen. Yeah. So, right, well, for the purposes of what, what Matt was describing, which is let's get to Castle Brackenwall. We got to move. We can carry tents and bedrolls and everything with us yeah, on yeah. a horse. Yes, yes, yes. So if we let were to leave Ethel at the at the inn, say, and just you know, give him some money for hay, yeah, probably we could do something like that. Okay, well let's go find out what we should do. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the next morning we should get up and ride back to Brigworth, basically, and yeah. then get some supplies and keep going. I mean, if we if we can wait full like twenty four hours to get that extra bit of rest and instance halifax will have more hp to be able to throw as a bulwark in front of you guys i don't think we have that kind of time bro Not a uh, i've got two weeks in counting i've got 14 days now i've got 13 and that's i don't even know how long until like my fingers start falling off it's gonna be a problem so like taking a whole 24 hours to convalesce is just like that just feels like i mean that's a whole 24 hours so well, we get uh, a good also sleep here at the castle, Haramore. First yeah. thing in the morning, you should have a new hit point. We yes, hit you the road. You, you could technically actually make it back to Prigwort by the end of the day, which is one heck of a day that you guys just had on the fifteenth of Limewald. Um, but you will you are offered free uh, a free night stay at Castle Haramore, so you would save yourself. If it's free, it's for me, man. I'm staying at Castle Haramore. Haramore is only an additional hour's journey anyway, mm -hmm. so I think we should sleep there. I agree that like. It would be nice to rest up, but I'm wondering what dead men would consider further time, right? Like, there's a certain impatience that we might feel at the prospect of... I know I judgment. feel a certain level of impatience. You guys have twice as long to live as I do. It's true. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, how much would we heal from just a nice rest? One. One? Well, we should do that, so I'm going to add an additional. Okay. Uh, it's full again, yay! <laughs> so you sleep uh, the night. You were given uh, very comfortable furnishings at, uh, at Haramore Keep. Um, uh, in the morning, you are you enjoy a delightful repast, um, and you are visited by uh, Lady Violet in private. She is basically sent by her mother, and she comes and uh, shyly thanks you for um, for what she has come to understand for saving her life. Um, she she uh, still is completely unaware and still a little bit, you know, traumatized by the whole thing. She's not quite sure what what happened. Um, she feels deeply, and you can't help but feel a little bit saddened when you look at her that something was stolen from her, right? In, in one way, shape, or form, um, that will never be returned to her. Uh, but uh, but uh, as far as these scenes go, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, so um, she's a, a very uh, poised little girl, and you think that she'll do just fine. Um, but uh, uh, but 
but uh, she just kind of takes your hands and like very, you know, uh, daintily shakes your hands and thanks you for your service um, before you head out again. Uh, oh, me to nothing. So you step out after dressing yourselves in your traveling gear, which has all been expertly clean, cleaned, um, feeling great, and you step out into what kind of air? Let's roll 2d6, please. I haven't rolled in a while. I'll do it. All right. Three. Three. Ooh. Two and a one. Oh, boy. It's going to oh be. Oh, boy. Yep. That freezing rain turned into a vicious snowstorm. Swirling mm. snow all around. Um, just uh, recently started, though, so it hasn't quite started to pile up yet, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty rough journey. Um, but uh, so you're like, well, time's a wasting. Um, let's get back before it starts sure. to impede our actual speed back to Prigwart. So um, on the road back to Prigwart, uh, it takes about an hour or so as you speed down the road. By the time that you get uh, come back in through the um, Groaning Gate, the north, um, or maybe you don't go through the Groaning Gate. Maybe you stop at the Clash Dantler first before you actually enter the town proper. Uh, the, the snow is on the ground. Um, it is going to impede your ability to travel uh, quickly down the Horse Eye Road. Um, but uh, it, now this depends on your urgency, right? Or it, This may change things now, right? So normally, um, the road is easily the quickest way to go down. Now, snow puts a big damper on that. Um, so snow is poor visibility. So it's actually going to affect your, um, your ability to not get lost. But thankfully, you have a hunter with you in Snell, so that's mitigated quite a bit. Um, so we're staying to the road, right? Like, that's our plan? Between Prigwart and Brackenwald, you mean? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm yeah. assuming, right? Well, first we got to... We, we get to uh, Prigwart okay, is what you're saying, right? You get to Prigwart, no problem. But I'm saying now there's snow okay. on the ground. Um, so and... The options are going forward this afternoon in the snow and maybe getting lost or waiting till tomorrow and seeing what the weather brings. Yeah, but regar out. regardless, snow will be on the ground. Oh, okay. Right. Right. So basically, here's the, what it does is it's going to make you 33% slower. Um, okay. So your movement rate of 48 is now going to be whatever a third of that is, what, uh, 16 slower. So what is yeah, that? 32. 32. Um, and then... Um, you have, uh, so normally following a road, you have zero chance of getting lost. Now you have a one in six chance of getting lost, but because you have a hunter, it's one in 12, which is pretty cool. You rolled oh, that's pretty a 12 sider, so that's pretty cool. Not bad odds. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, two and 12, two and 12. Wait, that's the same hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chance of getting lost is rolling a d12. The numbers are different. <laughs> And some hunter snell turned out to be. Fun track there's one and six uh chances. Yeah, so I would it's actually not a rule, rule specifically, but I would say that yeah, it would be one in twelve. One in twelve on a road with poor visibility. Okay. Yeah, and you'd be moving what did we say, thirty two? Thirty two. Um, so you're looking at Not enough to get us to Brackenwald in a day, assuming we don't get lost. I think so. Uh, yeah, no problem. Let me see here. There would be six, 18, 18, 22, 22 plus four. It's about 26 miles or so. All right. John, when we were talking to, what was his name? Wormspittle? Wormspittle, yeah. Wormspittle. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't he tell us something about the, that little house that's kind of halfway between Prigwort and Brackenwald? Uh, uh, he may have mentioned it. That would that is the refuge of Saint Key. Um, oh, so that, and he, did he mention it like in terms of like that's where we turn forest to the north. Uh, north yes, he did. Yeah, that. that's that's exactly yeah. what it was. So he said that if you wanted to, so remember the other option for for um, for getting cured is to find the nobbled mandrake, which is in the yeah. gold, the golden wood. The golden wood. The easiest way to find it is if when you're staying at the refuge of Saint Key to head directly northeast into the woods. And you'll notice the tree is changing, and you'll know that you're there. The other way to do it is to actually take the Mulcher's path, which is the path that goes to the north, the northeast, um, a little bit before the refuge. Go and go to the town of Orb Swallow, which is not on the map, which is a moss dwarf community. 
and head south from the Moss Dwarf community into that wood as well. Um, either way, you, you're you're yeah. going from a place of haven, right, the refuge or orb swallow to um, to right. go into the wood. Right. Um, what would what would we know of uh, about the the refuge? Uh, you, you remember it? I mean, you know, I just. I, I, you you have stayed there, but I don't want to like you know. It, it, it's a it's a it's a working abbey, but it's uh, but it, it it makes all of its money from basically charging for people to stay there. It's like a you know, um, it's a motel. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a yeah, it's a nice wayside inn. Um, uh, not an inn. It's a working abbey, but they put up travelers. Okay. You get a little religion with your uh, with your with your meal, basically. It's the way it's the way it works. Bible in the drawer. Yeah, exactly. A little Gideon's, Gideon's Volgate. So, before we head out, we got to get some supplies, and I have a couple questions, John. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I think you said at one point. Now I don't remember. Uh, but essentially, anything we want to get that's on the basic equipment list, we can get in Brigwort. Um, as a cook pot yes. or a tent. Well, what Rope. what what day of the week is sixteenth of Limewald? Ooh. Um, if it's any other day but Collie. Then you are correct. I have my calendar here. Hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> calendar. I printed it out. Yesterday was Kali. I think so. Yeah. So unfortunately, you missed market day. So um, it is. It won't happen till. Uh, oh, you know what? Roll me. Someone roll me a D ten. All right, I got it. But a, a two. Two. Okay. Vague. Does not begin, luckily for you. Um, all right, so but it uh, chime is the day of today, right? It's chime. Yes, it is chime. So, uh, you basically everything that's on the expanded equipment list, um, more or less, you can get. Okay. Um, and then I got all this cash. Assuming we're not going to go carousing because these guys are, you know, in mortal fear of, of rotting. Mm -hmm. Um. Is there a bank or something in town? I, I don't really want to carry so much cash around. I won't exactly. be able to carry any more when we find it. Right. right. Exactly. Same here. Yeah. So there isn't a bank per se, but there is like a money lender. A money lender. Okay. Yeah. And uh, who would serve uh, sort of like the same purpose. Um, okay. Give me a moment. Uh, let's see. So, um, Uh, let's make it a woman. Her name is going to be um, her name is going to be Lizbeth. Okay. Okay. Pretty, so let's assume yeah. I go get some supplies and then I go see Lizbeth. How yep. does this play out? Uh, so basically she will um She'll guarantee the safety of your funds for a five percent cut, or whatever you bring in. Five percent. Right. You want to do that or dig a hole? Um, dig a hole. Digging a hole may take a hundred percent. The rest probably yeah. won't. No. You could also. You mean? You mean obviously, it's super unsafe, but it's a lot safer than like staying in like a room at an inn. You you could do one of those shacks at the Clash Dandler where you have a little bit more privacy. But of course, yes. Are there any houses for sale in Prigwart? No. Uh, yeah. So I, I will. Uh, I will go to the um, the money lender and I'll pay the five percent fee. On. I want to buy sixty six gold worth of supplies. So, so what do you have? You have uh, four thousand gold, am I right? Well, I've, I'm assuming a thousand each. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the uh, five percent of four thousand? Well, I'm not giving her four thousand. I'm taking my share of a thousand. I'm spending sixty-six gold, leaves nine hundred and thirty-four. Five five percent of a thousand is fifty gold. Well, in this case, I'm not giving her a thousand. I'm giving her nine hundred and thirty-four. So I, I, re, I will have 887.3 at the end of it. What you guys do with your money is your problem. 
Argus wants to take his cash, go buy some supplies, deposit his money. He's got a little note that says it's his. Sorted. All right. I like your plan. It's a good plan. First thing I'm going to go do is go do is uh, see Muscle and Druge. Muscle Meyer Druge. Yeah. Okay. Knock on the door. Uh huh. Let Urko the horrible let me in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you you meet with Muscle Meyer. What are you What are you asking him? I want to see if I can inscribe, um, if he has any spells that he will allow me to inscribe. Oh, and I have. He says arcane secrets are, uh, they're hard to come by, Vlad. I, believe me, I know. <laughs> believe me, I know. I just use ventriloquism on a, on a, on a gloaming. So, you know, <laughs> um, did you know? Looking up, I, looking up my utility for my, the rest of my group. <laughs> You already said that you might be interested in taking me on as a uh, as an apprentice of some sort. Um, unfortunately, I have death rot, so that might preclude my ability to fulfill any missions that you might have for me. <laughs> However, I am trying to cure that death rot, and in order to do that, I think it might be useful for me to have you know a, a few extra spells under my belt. Understood. Understood. Um, one moment. Let's see here. Mm, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Uh, he looks at you like it, you know, like you can see that you've sort of You've been through a lot. We can kind of see that in your short time that he's known you. Um, but uh, once again, it's... Uh, he's willing to part with... He, he could give you something to copy, um, and it would be... Uh, you wouldn't have to roll for it, basically. Like, you could you could 100% get it. Um, it'll cost you... Uh, it'll cost you 900 gold. Oh, for real? Yeah. I bought a tent already. <laughs> but I'm also I'm also buying a tent. Yeah. So is that the, is that my rates for sharing going, my tent are very reasonable. Is that the usual going rate, John? Is that like usually like is that is that like <laughs> it's, it's is that a front price? It's, it's cheaper than like, what it would take to actually research it, and it takes you no time, and you have no chance of failing. And it's also I, the most powerful first level spell. Could it be any first level spell I want? No, this is for sleep. Oh, for sleep. Yeah. Sold. Done. This is what you wanted, right? Is it, was it yeah, sleep? 900. Yeah. I mean, that charm person, um, power word kill, any of the above would be fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, he'll he'll offer you sleep and nothing else for 900 gold. Done. Sold. Okay, cool. All right. All right. You can, uh, so he, he pulls off like, uh, you actually see like, claws sort of scuttle back into the darkness of the bookshelf quickly before he grabs exactly the book where the claws were um, and he pulls it out and it's some ancient grimoire and he allows you to to study it um, uh, and do it. This is the only thing basically that you can do during the day. There's nothing else that you can do. Um, so we're spending another we're going to spend an extra day in pre-work. It it's it's impossible to copy. It. What Mike? It's snowing. We might as well just stay here for a day and let them do the recoup thing. Yeah, that makes well, sense. In which case, maybe I want to do a little carousing after all. Oh, carousing, yeah. Uh, so, Elfric, last thing. Um, he, um, this also will be kind of officially begin, like as he kind of watches you studying the spell and kind of painstakingly copying it, he kind of takes pity on you and he's like, you do understand that uh, when you do the looping symbol here in this rune here, that what you're actually doing is, you know, and so he, he, like despite himself, he's like, I can't watch you fuck up like this. So, <laughs> so he's like, uh, he slowly, reluctantly, sort of takes you under his wing during this day, um, and you also begin the rudimentary beginnings of learning the crooked speech. Ooh. Okay. Um, slowly. Nice. Uh, yeah, but uh, but you do through with his guidance. I actually, I'll, I'll, you can sleep can now be one of your spells. So well done. Okay. Uh, cool. And can I just ask one more question? Yes. Under the, resource, <coughs> under the resources page is 
is our character sheets, but they're not form fillable. You can't like edit them, correct? You have to open them up and then resave them to that file. I believe Sorry. so. Yeah, yeah. I've just been keeping mine on my own drive at home. Um, do you want me to be uploading it to your resources page, John? Yeah, it's whatever. You, yeah, I just want to be able to see like the current version of your character. You know, well, not much has changed except my supplies, that, which is that, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. But any major thing like where you now no sleep, that would be a big that would that would I would like to see, or if you get like a major magic yeah, okay. item or something like that. Um. Uh, give me one second here. So, um, also before he goes, um, he says, "I noticed you as well were." Uh, you felt what we have off, uh, what I have often felt here, which is uh, that sound like the moaning of the dead. Am I correct? Right. Yeah, I didn't because want to mention it because I thought I was crazy. Said you are not. Um, this is something that all of us who are steeped in the arcane often feel at certain places in in Dolmenwood. In my earlier years before I retired here, I very rarely leave the town now. There were other places where I felt something different. Have you encountered places like this? Yeah, I'll what? be completely honest with the guy. I'll tell him that. When we were at the Abbey, I felt like a um, disinterested malevolence, like a cyclopean horror. And uh, at the um, at Harrowmore Keep, it was uh, I'm trying to remember what it was there. That was like a um, waking dream there. Yeah, but I, I so I I, I experienced that. I tell him that one too. He says he kind of steeples his fingers over his uh, you know his bejeweled fingers with his octagonal glasses and all that sort of stuff, and leans back in his chair. Um, and he actually looks around to see if that strange creature is actually in the bookshelves waiting and listening before he kind of leans in close and he says, he goes, I'm not an expert in geomancy. He goes, but the true masters of geomancy are the watchers of the stones, the ones that people fear to say their name, the Droon. You may have heard of them in your travels. They are great hoarders of secrets, specifically arcane secrets. If I were you, I would stay well clear of them. But I do know that they derive much of their power from knowing the secrets of the ley lines that permeate all of Dolmenwood. The reason why the, the forest is so enchanted, some people believe, I know the Druun do, and they would know best, is because of the confluence of the different ley lines that crisscross through this particular part of the Dolmen in Dolmenwood. Um, I know... Very little, but I do know one thing. I do know that Prigwart lies very near or along the line, the ley line Ewer. And that's Y-W-Y-R. That they are, their paths of arcane earth energy that sustain the very life of the land itself. And it's likely, uh, like I said, that Dolman was close association with, with fairy as a result of the confluence of multiple ley lines here. So there are there are these nodal stones that lie, that were erected a long time ago in ages long past at nexus points along these lines, and they're greatly coveted by the, anyone who seeks arcane power. I was not immune to it, but the Druun above all else, no, none more so than the Druun. And almost all of the known nodal stones that are throughout Dolmenwood are guarded by one of the most, by uh, each one of the locations, the nodal stones, by a very powerful Druun. Uh, so if you stumble upon one of these stones or one of these rings of stones, be very, very wary before you investigate because it's likely that it is guarded by the Droon and they will brook no one trespassing on what they claim is their own. Um, but these are uh, these nodal stones at these nexus points, the ley lines, is what gives Dolmenwood its name, the Wood of Dolmens. Um, he goes, I know of only one uh, the location of only one of these stones, but most of them are hidden uh, by the Druin's arcane powers. It's known. It's called the Gorth Stone, and it lies to the northeast. Should I overlay a hex map atop a map of Dolmenwood <laughs> and label it, I would say that it would be in the in the hex label twelve o five. On our map, it's. Uh, let me just correlate it real quick to my master map here. Give me a second so I'm not misleading you. Uh, it would be, remember this map is not at all the scale, but it would be roughly around here. Can you see that? Yeah. That's not far at all. Okay. No. Can the viewer see that? Yeah, they can see it. Okay. Um, 
uh, and I believe that because I have actually been to the Gore Stone, or I, uh, no, yeah, that, and I felt the same exact thing in that area, I think that confirms that the ley line you were runs southwest to northeast. Like, if we're feeling it here in Prigwart, and the Gorth Stone, a nodal stone, is to the northeast, and it's likely that the line runs in a straight line from the southwest to the northeast. Um, but there are... The feeling that we're having is generated by the ley lines. Yes. That's... Is there any truth to the feeling? Or like, am I really feeling like the... The reason stone... why it is the moaning of the dead in one place along this line of Ewer versus something that you're feeling at the Abbey, which it, I believe it indicates the presence of a, of a different ley line. So there must be, like, it is not Ewer that runs through the Abbey. It is not Ewer that runs through Haramore Keep for it, because you are feeling something different. You're experiencing something else. Now, what those experiences mean, why the ley line Ewer um, has the, the, the moaning of the dead as its sort of signature call, I don't know. The Druun would know. But if you're brave enough to, uh, to ask them, then you're braver. you're a braver man than I. Um... Now, I warn you, should you investigate the Gorse Stone, that uh, there are tales often that there is a spirit that haunts that glade in which the stone resides. Now, I don't know if that spirit um, is, you know, changed through time um, and it is actually the Druun that guards the place. Qu could very well be. Um, or it could be an illusion that the Druun has set up to scare away trespassers. Uh, but I sense in you someone who is a seeker of secrets, of arcane lore. Um, and I... As I told you the first time we met, um, I see a lot of myself in you. Um, but I warn you that I have paid the price for the knowledge, um, and I am more than happy to stay here fat and happy, drinking the lovely beverages here that Prewart has to offer, and never think any more about the lost secrets of Dolman Wood. Um, but I know that the uh, adventurous spirit is not so easily quelled, and that you have to learn those lessons on your own. Um, and so I offer this uh, uh, this piece of knowledge um, to do with as you will, but uh, but also this word of caution as well when you venture forth that there are always bigger fish in Dolman Wood um, and you'd always, always be careful. Um, and he points to, you know, the, the spreading wounds on you. Now, he says, I say all this with the, with the fleeting hope that perhaps you will survive in the, the next two weeks and that you will not die a horrible death. Um, but you have a strong, stout, companions with you that uh, I believe that you stand a, a better chance than most of overcoming this. I appreciate your trust in me and I, I would promise to share any knowledge that I do gain in my adventuring career should I last the next couple of weeks. Um, as, a, as a meeting of minds and as a, a sharer of knowledge. His, um, his eyes glint you... as you mentioned that you may actually share any secrets that you learn. And he says, I would pay well for the sharing of any secrets that I would uh, that I was unaware of um, but I'm going to be very honest with you um, as someone who I might may eventually regard as my own pupil um, that the, what I could pay pales in comparison to what both the Imperial Institute would pay and what the church would pay in order to take those secrets and keep them secret forever um, and also I am always as I said loath to anger the Droon um, as I am only one man in the end. Would so. you happen to know uh, anything about Novel de Mandrake, which I'm told by Wormspittle is the only cure for what ails me, besides the intervention of a very high priest? He, he kind of, of course, says, it's not something I'm familiar with, but I am not, uh, I am not versed in the ways of herbs and herbs and plants and fungi here in the forest. Um, Worms, I... Wormspittle would be the one to, to talk to there. Can I point him out to the section of forest where Wormspittle told us to go and ask if he has any knowledge of that, that is, area? I have not traveled there because of the knowledge I do have of the place. The Golden Wood is not somewhere that you should tarry long. The Pole of Fairy will uh, will afflict you there. Um, and you will, you will not find... If, if you are not careful... Uh, you will find the mortal world no longer to your liking, and you will uh, forever be uh, drawn towards the fairy realm. Is there anything that we can use to bargain with fairies or to stave off the effects? I've heard that cold iron is 
uh, proof against some of their magics. Is that true? No, pure iron is something that can harm them and they avoid it. So if you wish to not come into contact with them or, or, or at least give them pause, wielding pure iron would be the way. But um, uh, as far as protection, that would be very difficult. Uh, they are very tricksome creatures. They are amoral. Uh, so any of the spells that would normally protect us from fiends and such have no effect. Um, uh, the only is the only way to appease them is to gift them with whatever they require, which can also often be just like an acorn off the ground, and sometimes it can be, you know, cheese from the moon. Mm. As, as likely mm. for them to to ask for something one thing and and, and for the other. Okay. Just oh, There's, just be no careful when you're dealings with them. Just be careful should like, you encounter them. Like moonflowers or anything like that. That would be like a standard gift for them or anything like that. I do not, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. What about the what did you the the guy who runs it is the king in yet not the king in yellow. That's the that's Earl of Yellow. The Earl of Yellow. Yeah. Do you have any knowledge of like him in particular and what he seeks? Well, what kind of gift? I know that it is the rumor in town that it, it, um, that the Earl of Yellow is uh, uh, um, is a patron of Prigwort. I will tell you this: that there is no way that the Elevated Council um, is able to produce the goods that it does and hold on to the power that it does without the help of Fairy. So laugh not whenever you see the painted yellow figure in Earl's court and think that it looks funny and that it is a that it is a, a subject of children's tales. The Earl of Yellow is very real and is very powerful. Um, is he is he actually the person is he actually the being in charge of Prigwort? I don't know. But he has power here. And I would anger him not. Mm, okay. I'm good. Mm. Cool. If there's anything else. Alright, so what were you guys gonna do in? Well, it's getting late. I I wanted to carouse, but I don't know how much longer you want to go. Um, we could do. We could. Me, we could do one. Out all to spend some money on one of those healing potions that Wormspittle sells. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's a good point. So I'd like to buy one of those, uh, and then. Grow. Yes, so we could probably do that and do one carouse roll if the, if everyone's cool with that. Carousing is super fun and actually pretty quick. Um, so you have your, uh, there's worm spittle, which is the herbal admixture, right? So that's five GP per dose. That'll get you one extra hit point per day of complete rest. And then there's the other one, which is the brewmaster's balsam, which is the alchemical compound. Now that costs you 200 gold per jar of three doses. That's the one I wanted. Yeah. So that's the black gloop, right? So you have to carry it in that glass jar. So just be aware that, um, unless you tell me otherwise, there is a chance that might be broken. Should you be in combat or whatever? Right. Um, okay. uh, applied to wounds. If it's applied immediately after combat, a dosage heals you 1d4 hit points. But then the effects of the substance in your bloodstream gives you a minus one penalty to armor class and saving throws until you've had a night's rest. And that effect is cumulative if you apply more than one dose before that night's rest. Does one night's rest get rid of all of the effects if you have to use like three doses? Yep. Okay. Yep. You just have to rest. What's the other admixture you said? That's just for that, getting hit points back at, at night. No, that's that's worm spittle, and it's you get in, you get one extra hit point per day of complete rest. So that's when you have a, oh. a full twenty four hour day as rest, you okay. get to roll a d three to heal. You would automatically gain an extra hit point, so you would have a minimum of two hit points healing on a on a complete bed rest. All right, I'm just gonna buy the brewmaster's balsam. All right, two hundred gold. How much okay. is how much is the worm spittle? That's five GP per dose. We'll buy five of those and uh, one of the 200. Okie dokie. All right. So let's say I haven't been to the money lender yet. I'm still tracking my cash here. Mm -hmm. So okay. I don't know how much I want to spend on carousing. Yeah. All right. Carousing. So this is pretty sweet. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. So uh, what you're going to do, and we'll, this will close out the session, but um, this will be pretty fun. Is, um, is it, this is all risk versus reward, okay? Right. So what you're doing this for is that you automatically gain XP. This is in the classic sword and sorcery Conan sort of thing, right? So right, um, right. you, uh, depending on the size of the settlement, there's village, town, city, metropolis. Prigwar is a town that provides the upper cap of what you can spend and what you can earn in XP. 
okay? Basically, okay. the economy of the town. But you have your choice to spend anywhere lower on that list that you qualify for. So you can spend either on the town level or the village level. A town, you're going to be rolling a D8 times 150. A village, you'd be rolling a D6 times 100, okay? Now, whatever you end up rolling, you get that X, that amount of XP, experience, right. no matter what, okay? So it can be sizable, right? It can be sizable. But also, no matter what, you spend that amount of money, even if you don't have the money. And if you don't have the money, you owe the money. You're in debt, okay? Um, and if you can't afford the money, you have to roll on the carousing mishaps table. Right. Likewise, if the number that you roll on the die, either a D6 or a D8, if that number is higher than your level, you have to roll on the carousing mishaps table anyways. You're only first level, which means that you would have to roll a one on that a, a D6 or D8 in order to not roll on the carousing mishaps table. Basically, the more experienced you are, the better you are at spending your money. Um, understand? So the carousing mishaps table, although I will not tell you what's on that table and will not allow you to look at it, um, I will tell you that nothing uh, ends up in death. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. short of that, oh, okay. well. <laughs> short of that, so there's a lot of funky stuff that can happen. So just be aware <laughs> that there is a there is a definite downside to this, a, a, a mishap and debt, but you get major chunks of XP, right? Yeah. I just want to remind you that uh, everyone recalls when we went carousing in Blades in the Dark, I never saw that character again. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It is kind of he, similar. It is kind of similar. He moved away with a rich old lady, and that was the last we saw. Yeah. Him. Now, you won't... You won't I forgot you, about that. You won't wow. lose your character, but there is a chance that something may happen where your character is, like, out for, like, a while, in which case, you know, your, your friends would either have to wait for you or go on without you so oh they should totally wait for me would you first would you like to carouse i will carouse would you like to do I, on I a will village also or, carouse oh yeah. okay the village or the town level uh, i think given that i'm definitely rolling on the mishaps i'm going to mit mitigate risk and i'm going to roll on the village level okay how about you halifax uh yeah i'll also roll play it safe roll the d6 okay cool all right so uh, feeling it's a snowstorm, but you know you'd rather be inside. Yes, D six times what is 100. the chance? So you could end up being go like spending six hundred gold. Yep, six hundred XP. Yep. What's below it's, village? It's still one to one. Nothing. <laughs> it's nothing below village. Nothing below village. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Money. I just want to. I want to. Uh, yours to do what you want with the gold, of course. Just going to point out again, if the bishop doesn't work out, we might want to have some finances to hire a guide to go into this forest with us. Maybe from the Mossdorf settlements. Like, I'm going to save all of my money for that purpose. I'm happy to spend that for the party. But if we have any sort of like concern that we might lose all of our gold right now, like mm -hmm. <laughs> well, then something, could... something to weigh in your mind is all I'm saying. on me tonight, guys. Yeah. Death rot approaches. You might as well enjoy yourself. I'm buying. This is a good time. Right. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're living while we can. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm gonna you, do you, it, right. dude. Like, if I'm gonna be dead in two weeks, what's the point? Right on. Okay. Like, All right. Cool. This is a good time for it. So, snowstorm out. You're gonna go ply the ply the inns and pubs in town and just get fucking wrecked in celebration of uh, the the monumental achievement that you guys have done today uh, in the past day. So, uh, right on. Snow's falling, so let's see what happens. Uh, uh, first, Alfred, are you rolling a, a village or town? I'll go village, dude. Everyone a village. Okay, so uh, yeah. one at a Eight. time. One at a time. 1d6. Uh, roll 1d6, please. All right, I'll go first. Okay. I'm going to roll on, on Albert. Okay, I'm looking. Oh, Alfred went first. Oh, and he rolled a one. He's perfect. perfect. That's the rest okay. of my money. I'm broke. All right, I'm we'll, broke. We'll do, El we'll do Alfred first then. Okay, uh, Alfred, so you... Um, yeah, yeah, you're gonna gain 100 XP, but you have to spend 100 gold. Can you afford it? Yes, that's the. I have five gold left in my name. Okay, because you rolled a one, which is great. You don't have to roll on the crossing mishaps table, so you literally oh, got good for you. You you got the least amount that you could possibly get, but you also didn't suffer any consequences. So, you you put back a few. You know, you have a good time. You wake up with a little bit of a hangover. The moaning of the dead still there, uh, but. Uh, you you had a good time and cut loose a little bit and it felt good, uh, so you wake up feeling feeling pretty refreshed. So you get 100 XP. That's uh, Elfric. Okay. 
Oh, my 5%, right? I get 5% for what? my stats. So I should have like 1,050 plus 105. Uh, I'll track it and give you guys the, the total amount. So just uh, just hold off for now. I'm, I'm, I'm writing it all down and I'll give you the total. Um, I'll forget 100 XP. Okay, it's next up. Who is rolling next? I'll, I'll go next. Okay. Oh, man. One as well. Okay. Can you afford it? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Nothing too exciting so far on the old uh, carousing, but you gain 100 XP for nothing, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and lastly, Halifax. Okay. <laughs> Something. Uh, if you roll a one, it's going to be pretty crazy. A big, big numbers, no whammies. Big money, no Here whammies. we go, baby. Oh, Thanks. the big one. Okay. All right. Halifax. You're going to gain 600 experience points just for yourself, which is crazy. That, yeah, that's the equivalent of getting um, like 2,400 XP for a session from everybody, right? Because you have to divide it by four. Pretty amazing. So um, can you afford 600 gold? I can. Okay. But because you are only a mere level one and you did not roll a one, you must roll on the crossing mishaps table. So spend uh, What's the worst that could happen? Owing more. Well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> actually. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I can't actually show this to the viewers because you guys are going to watch it and I can't let you guys see the screen. So hold on a second. We promise not to look. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Why? It's not happening to me. The best part about carousing with your friends is watching them fuck up. <laughs> right. Uh, you should so, know. Sorry, sorry, audience, but I uh, got to hide this one. Uh, everyone's going to be better off for it anyways. Okay. Well, no one at least, right? Uh, roll me a d20, please, Halifax. Morning, you wake up with a sheep. A 19. A 19. Goat. You look entirely too pleased. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So this is going to take some work on my end, which is great, but it's fine. All right. So uh, when in the midst of your carousing, you were in the midst of a drunken stupor, you got into some god-awful mess um, that you saw the only way that could possibly get out of it is that you pray to God that you could get that you could get out. Well, lo and behold, it appears that God has not only heard you and got you out of that mess, but has uh, put you under the effects of a quest spell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I will have to come up with a suitable quest that has been uh, uh, that has been imposed upon you by the awesome. who, who whatever saint heard your heard your prayers. Um, to get you out of uh, the uh, wow, some horrible thing that you were probably doing that night, which is very unknightly. Uh, uh, it's, it's very unfortunate that our wizard's going to have to die for it. So that's pretty know. awesome. <laughs> we're ready for the cure. <laughs> this is your quest, Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's see how I can fuck with you this way. That'll be pretty fun. Oh, man. All right, It'd cool. be awesome. Quest was to find some nobbled mandrake. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm going to be that nice? Uh, no, no, I, actually, the quest is going to be destroy all novel. <laughs> yeah, novel right. Exactly. Uh, who knows? I might, I may come up with like a little small chart and I'll actually roll on it, so it's not too biased on my part. But we'll see. Um, okay, so uh, you uh, a relatively uh, safe night uh, carousing. Um, Halifax is the big winner slash loser of that one. Um, everyone's taken off the correct amount of money. Yeah, I still have all of mine. Yep, Snell wakes right. up the most refreshed um, with his clean-shaven face, as he always does. Um, and uh, th now it is 17 Lime Wild. And um, there is snow on the ground, but just as a last thing, let's just go find out what um, the uh, weather's like, shall we? So we know what we're heading into here. 2d6. I have it. I have it. Hold on. I'll do the weather today. 2d6, you said? Yes, please. A two and a four. Six. Six. Yes! Six. Beautiful day. Six. Not bad. Um, it's a f uh, frigid and icy day, so it's like well below freezing, um, but it is clear. So that would that actually makes sense for snow being on the ground, right? Like nothing is melting at yeah. all. So it's just a, a very, very, very cold day. Um, I have one, one question before we close, John. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot recall our conversation when we first rolled our gear, our character creation. Mm-hmm. But I know that a longbow has a uh, specialized trait yep. which requires uh, strength to be your primary requisite. In That's order. right. That's not the case with a hunter. Yeah. But I rolled a longbow as my bow. 
it's possible for me to hawk that and trade it in for a short bow in town while everyone's crowsing and doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, totally. Yep. Um, so, uh, just to be clear, you can use a longbow, just minus four to attack, um, yeah, if you're not, okay. but just, just so you're aware. Um, but yeah, you yeah, can do yeah. it, uh, basic, uh, the way you probably already think of it. So you can sell the longbow for half and then sp yeah. spend money on whatever you want. Yeah. So yeah. How, how longbow I believe is what? 40 short bow is 25. So I'd sell it for 20 and buy the short bow. Right. So you're just spending in five gold, five gold, right. Yeah. Net. Uh, uh, John, the the last thing I'm looking. I, I'm sorry. Were you done? No. Nope, yep. Okay. Uh, the last thing um, Halifax is hoping to pick up, which kind of isn't on the regular list, but maybe they have something. He wants to try to buy um, a, a tankard, uh, almost like a touristy one that looks like tankard that the um, uh, what was his name? Uh, the Earl of Yellow was holding in the statue. Um, okay. In, uh, in town, if somebody sells something, something like that. Uh, mm. Yeah, actually, uh, there is. I don't think you're going to like it. I don't think you're going to like it, but um... so at at the Oaf and the Oast, good old oh, Hegged, Hegged and Axminster. Um, what is uh, what they're it's, what it's sort of known for actually is that it serves all of its um, uh, its uh, house. What's known as Hegged's Bitter. Um, and uh, these two pint uh, ceramic steins, like big, big steins, like two pints worth. Um, and they are worked into the uh, faces of rosy cheeked barmaids. If you want something like that, it's a it's a definite thing of like um, like a tourist souvenir of Prigwort would be one of those steins. Absolutely. That's what I want. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. So that would cost you. Uh, let's see. Three gold. No, oh, perfect. Gold. I'm, I'm also going to buy a mirror, and then I'm done. Cool. Yeah, we can also do like more shopping at the beginning of the next session too. So I'm, I'm okay. not going to say you're on the road if you, if you don't want to be. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, but just uh, mark off. I'm going to trust that you guys are marking off all of your stuff correctly. Um, yep. We'll pick up with like what goes to the money lender and that cost and all that kind of stuff next time. So don't mark any of that stuff off. Also don't mark your XP. We'll take care of that all off session. Okay. And I'll, uh, okay. I've got my spreadsheets all worked out that calculate that stuff all. Okay. All with a push of a button. So not a big deal. Um, One thing, uh, John, just while we're carousing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know about Elfric and Halifax, but Argus would definitely, you know, be like, you know, Hey, we just saved Harold Moore's kid. We're pretty famous. That kind of thing everywhere they right. go around. You know, right, sure, yeah. you know. Well, you are going to get like a lot of people like plying you. Like, we didn't we see you with the knight's retinue that kind of stormed into town twice in one day and all that kind of. You know what I mean? Like, what was that all about? Do you guys, um, in a drunken stupor, do you tell them the truth, or do you do, mm. do you make it seem like more of like a tall tale, like it was just us who took her in hand, and you know, or well, after a few drinks, Argus is probably prone to the tall tale version. You know, and, uh, you know, oh, there was the horrible monster, and we stabbed it with our steely knives, and oh, yeah. great thing, you know, and just really hamming it up, and, you know, and every time Halifax tries to be like, and then I did this, and he's like, oh, don't listen to him, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which actually, it was, it was uh, lady, my, my lady who did that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah Halif Halifax isn't lying about this. He knows word would get back up the chain. That he was taking credit, so he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sure, it wasn't exactly like that. <laughs> uh, it was totally like that. So a lot of people, because they're also drunk and stupors as you're carousing, they don't. Um, half of them just dismiss you as like you're just fucking liars. Like we don't know you. Like, <laughs> like, like but sure, yeah, yeah. Like, you rescued, rescued Lady Violet. Yeah, that happened. You know. But then there's other people who are like they saw you with those knights, and those were Haramore knights, and they had some business in hand. You know what I mean? Like they were charging through town, so they they can't quite dismiss what you're telling them, but they do think that you're full of a lot of braggadocio and uh, a lot of hot air. But um, one guy right there. Yeah, that one guy. Yeah. So, but. Um, but in the end, because there was three of you who actually went out there and kind of were spreading the word, um, word does get around that there are, th at least, that there are three guys out there saying that they rescued Lady Violet. So um, instead of just being like wandering travelers like so many others um, that walk through here and that, like I told you, you saw at the Clash Dantler, you're starting to sort of separate yourself from the pack of travelers and peddlers and merchants and adventurers and stuff like that as like, these guys have a story to tell, right? That sort of thing, right? Whether or not it's true, who knows, but... 
right. you know, you're starting to make a name, put it that way. And uh, that's a pretty good place to end it, right? Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, so we'll pick it up uh, with uh, the journey to Castle Brackenwold or perhaps uh, the Golden Wood directly. We'll see what uh, the players decide to do once they reach the refuge of St. Key in the snowy ground. Um, real quick, guys, just whose idea was it to search that tower? I just, I just want to ask real quick. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll prof to Elfric. <laughs> yep. It's, I, I'm too drunk to remember now. Uh, there was yeah. uh, this El, Elfric in the. Mike, uh, Mike had a panic in the middle of the night that we ended last session without searching the tower, and we all went. Ah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, El, good job. Now it's Elfric in the jab turkeys. We <laughs> not playing really about this game. Right. All right, that was fun, right. guys. Uh, so we'll pick it up next time, uh, hopefully at Castle Brackenwood. Uh, thanks World. a lot, John. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, please. Take care. Bye.